It's always an adventure starting these streams. <laughs> you know. Never no. know. All right. Hey, there we Audio are. Audio down. I see me. I see you. <laughs> I see Q. I see Q. <laughs> yeah. I don't think the kids are young enough to get that one. Uh, They're old enough to get that one. <laughs> darn boomers. Uh. <laughs> okay, boomers. <laughs> Welcome to Talking Heads, episode 113, your once-weekly live show for the latest in beer and tech news. I'm Jeff. I'm John. How's everybody doing out there? Happy 2020. Uh, we no, are not Barbara Walters. No, we are not. <laughs> Happy 2020, though. Yes. Have a good New Year? Uh, you know, I went, I went over to Steve's, and uh, you weren't that far away but i was just drained that day <laughs> and uh we we went home to go put the kid down and, and yeah. i went to go sit on the couch and i was just like i can't get up i'm done i'm done yeah i'm just yes. uh, steve came over and made an appearance yeah uh, I, I in fact he was over and i made him two cocktails while he was over <laughs> <laughs> that's an appearance that's an appearance <laughs> two cocktails is an appearance oh, come here, buddy. Oh. newest addition to our family since we usually introduce our pets here on the show, uh, everybody meet Rambo. Rambo is our, our new kitty. Wait, isn't it supposed to be John? No, it's, it's Rambo. John Rambo. Where are you going? Do you name the cat after me? Where are you going? Well, he came with the name Rambo. Where oh. are you going? Seriously. Hey. There you go. Uh, he came with the name Rambo, and uh, they immediately wanted to change it to Rainbow or no, stuff like that. At least keep... Said, I said, we're getting a cat. I didn't really want a cat. Not that I don't like cats, but I don't like owning cats. Yeah. Uh, and I said, if we're getting a cat, he's being named Rambo still. He's <laughs> keeping the name. So. Well, you need a little bandana for him, too. Yeah. And then get a knife. A little, little camo bandana. And then, yeah, and then we'll get him like a bow, and then we'll get him to hit the gym. He looks more like Rambo 1. Yeah. we got to get him pumped up and buff. He is like, a bit of a spazzy cat. He's, so. he's kind of fun. Especially when he's uh, off exploring. He hasn't spent much time in the office yet. But, uh, so expect wires to be chewed. Yeah, exactly. Uh, hopefully not. Uh, anyway, uh, welcome to the show, everyone. If you've never seen the show before, uh, we're usually on Wednesday nights. Thursday is kind of a weird thing because of the holidays. Uh, next week, I have no idea when the stream will be, but we will be having a stream at some point live from Las Vegas with a couple of special guests. So do stay tuned for that one. Uh, follow me on Twitter to, to find out when that is going to be. Uh, or join the Discord and get uh, direct access by joining the Patreon. Yep, probably see a bunch of extra adventures that yes. will not be on any YouTube channel. Yes, there there might be some uh, some Patreon exclusive posts, <laughs> <laughs> especially with some of the lineup I have planned. Uh, but uh, yeah, leaving for Vegas on Saturday morning and uh, live from Las Vegas next week. So uh, be sure to stay tuned for that. Oh, yeah. uh, if you've never seen the show before, uh, we do drink beer on the show, but we keep it as family friendly as humanly possible, uh, both in content and in language. So the youngins are more than welcome to join. Yep. Um, uh, we usually go for about 20 to, someone says audio issues. Audio's out now? Why is the audio out? Whose audio? Both of ours? Mine? Jeff's? What? Audio out. Uh, super, super bad audio lads. Weird. Uh, it was working just fine. Hmm. Test. Hmm. I'm, I'm there. I wonder if we're just... Uh, peeking? Peeking a little bit. Yeah. I am trying my, my lav mics. Yeah, we were probably a little bit hot. How's that? Better. I, I took it down quite a Better. bit. Better. Yep. <laughs> that cat is skittish. He, he, yeah, he's a little spazzy. John's mic is clipping. Okay, that's what it is. Ah. Hey. That's my carpet. Yeah, I'm I'm peaking a lot higher than wow. yours. Oh wow, you are. Uh, is there a manual? Oh my god. Uh, okay, hold on. Stop talking. <laughs> he he just handed this to me. You're, why are you still talking? <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Interesting. Uh, let me check the camera side. Do, do, My do, mic do, do, should be do, fine. Do, Why is John do, being do, all... Do, 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 do. I'm, I'm um, doing this, and I'm peeking. Yeah. Do, 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 see, mine, do, is, do, mine do, seems to be fine, but yeah, do, yours do, is... Do, 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 do. There it goes. Mine's going... Nope, nope. Um, do, yep. Really hot. Try that. 
Do, 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 do. No, I'm still just this is all the way uh, peaked. Okay. Uh, well, give me a second and we'll uh, go back to the overheads. Well, that's disappointing. Do, 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 do. Does mine at least sound good? Uh, yeah. Can people confirm mine at least sounds good or decent? My overhead's still up, but yours is uh, not. <laughs> I remember my first stream. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Uh, that, that, that's bite my bits. Harsh. Harsh, harsh. Here we go. Do, 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 do. Uh. Well, prepare for some echo. Yep. Yeah, I was trying to eliminate the echo and, you know, have a little bit more uh, say. Uh, there we go. This isn't so fucking great. arm is stuck. There we go. How about I just do this? Yeah, there you go. I'll just do this. Yeah, just do that. When I do this, oh, okay, you turn them off? Yeah, I turned them off. Okay. Yeah, I was like, wow, we're, we're, we're normal now. No, we're back on the overheads now. Look <laughs> at that. Welcome back to the echo chamber. Yeah, out of there. Stuck on my neck. Yeah, you there. might need to fix this before Yeah, Saturday. well, we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Yep. Ah, uh, our professional, professional weekly live stream. Uh, if something doesn't go wrong at least once, it's not talking heads. It's not talking heads, right. Uh, so, as I was saying, if you've never seen this show before, uh, we do drink beer, keep the content light. Uh, youngins are welcome to join because we won't, uh, we don't use language or... Try not to. Inappropriate content. We try not to and we usually preface it if we do, so... Yeah. Uh, Let us know what you're drinking in the chat. Yes. And uh, so, I brought something... Special yes. for the first 20 episode of 2020. Mm -hmm. It is Bourbon County's uh, Goose Island's Bourbon County 2019. This isn't none of the special ones. Though. This is still just the regular, but it's still right. quite delicious. It's still a Bourbon County stout. It's still a Bourbon County stout. It's the latest one. Um, this is the one I have duplicates of, so I was like, okay, I'll bring this. I, I think I have one or two of those in the fridge myself. Yeah, so. But fantastic beer. Yeah. I figure it's... First episode yep. of the year. Let's Gotta start, start it out, out right. Exactly. You know, actual real beer. Actual beer. Do you hear that, Jason? <laughs> actual beer. You, you need a, an opener to get it open. Yeah, you can't just... They, they, they don't want it to come open in shipping. Because, you know, Bud Light, it really doesn't matter. <laughs> Flat, warm, yeah. all taste the same. All right. Kitty is doing some exploring. It occurs to me I should have used some different glasses because this is only 16 ounces. Yeah, I was like, wow, um, okay. And then you even have the I even have I there. even have the taster glasses. <laughs> you know? That's still I'll, I mean, I'll take the extra. Yeah. It's fine. You, it's you, you got the overpour. Yes, that's right. So there you go. Oh, it smells delicious. For beer number one, 2019 Bourbon County Stout. Yep. Uh, let's jump into some beer news since we're already uh, 11 oh, minutes into this thing. And we actually don't really have too much beer news. Yeah. Um, it, it's the beginning of the year. Okay. Oh, Sorry, what? Kitty got a case of the zoomies yeah. all of a sudden. And uh, so what we thought about doing was actually kind of reviewing the top like seven most weird, outrageous uh, big things in beer news. Yeah. Uh, luckily, Forbes kind of, Forbes kind of compiled us a list of uh, of there those beer is. topics. Yeah. Uh, and then go ahead and hit F11 so we go full screen there. There we go. And uh, hopefully the audio doesn't cut out. And it did. Hold up. Uh, no, we're still good. Okay. Hey. Hey, look at that. Things are working. So, yeah, this is the top seven shockers of 2019. Yeah. And actually, we talked about all of them. Yeah. Which was uh, pretty cool. Yeah. I was kind of amazed. Like, we didn't miss anything. Um, so, number one was... Let's say, oh, was uh, Molson Coors mm -hmm. um, finally took away the, uh, basically, Coors name. Yep. Now it's going... Or it used to be Miller Coors. Miller Coors, correct. Miller Coors. Um, and then it used to be, like, Miller Coors Canada, Molson Coors um, Europe, or something like that. Mm-hmm. And so uh, a couple months ago, they dropped it. And and they've been the, uh, in America, they've been the Miller Coors Brewing Company. Yeah. Um, whereas uh, it was Molson Coors in, in other parts of the world and, and things like that. They are consolidating their name globally to Molson Coors Beverage Company. Yeah. 
So it'll be known by that. So there are no no longer exist Miller Coors. Man, my tongue is getting tied today. <laughs> you and me both. Oh gosh. I, I need a I, I, I yeah. I, I think by the time I'm gonna be down here, I'm gonna just be like, that's good. All right, I can <laughs> speak good. now. Yeah. So that yeah. was that was shocker number one. Shocker number two is probably Jeff's favorite. Uh, is the uprise. Of the seltzer, alcoholic seltzer beers. Yeah. Or beverages, I should say. They are not beers. I wasn't even aware this was a thing until like August. <laughs> yeah. I'm not even kidding. Uh, apparently it's been a, a year-long, 18-month-long trend, but yeah. it, it really emerged in 2019. So the big white claw, yeah. you know, the big seltzer, hard seltzer battles. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know if he's trying to get out or he's just playing. He's just playing. Okay. He's just running. <laughs> Um, so that was that was number two in the industry, and we had our fair share of white claws in the show. Two was two enough. Of them. <laughs> <laughs> two of them. Yeah, I think uh, I had the cherry, and you had like a mango. Uh, yeah, you had. No, I think it was a black, black, black. raspberry, blackberry, and then I had yeah. a mango orange or something yeah. like that. And we switched. Um, surprisingly, though, you bought them. I did. Yeah. <laughs> I went back and, and saw that. I was like. Yep. Horrible. What's funny is the week after I did we did that show, um, I happened to be down in Eugene watching a duck game, and uh, I rode the shuttle bus in. Um, so I parked at one of the malls down there and then rode the shuttle into the stadium. And there was someone on the shuttle bus slamming a 22-ounce White Claw. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I mean, they're not bad. They weren't bad for a summer day. Right. But they are definitely not. I wouldn't have it this time of year. Right. I wouldn't have it, you know, wintertime. There's no pumpkin spice white claw. There's no winter spice white claws. Yeah. You know, um, apparently though, I have I have been trying to get the Imperial Four Loco white claw. <laughs> the 17% uh, yeah. <laughs> hard seltzer. Don't you know people who can order that? Yeah. I just, I don't want them to know I want it. <laughs> I'm going to make some phone calls. Because <laughs> like, uh, I want you to review it. Yeah, oh, I would love to review it. I, I, I don't want it. <laughs> That's my fear is if I tell them, it's going to show up on my show. <laughs> oh, you know it's going to show up on your show because I'm going to order two and bring one over. Yep. Um, so number three was uh, the merger of Samuel Adams and Dogfish Head. Yep. So. By the way, I love the ads on the side of the, right? <laughs> the screen. I'm trying Forbes not to show awesome. up. I'm trying not to show them all that much. There we go. I mean, it's not a ton of skin, but it's like, come on, guys. Really? <laughs> Forbes is awesome. <laughs> so, but if you haven't heard though that um, the Boston Beer Company, um, Boston Samuel Adams, they bought Dogfish Head. Dogfish Head. Dogfish Head. Yeah. And uh, the two owners are uh, actually kind of I forget what the owner of Dogfish Head name was. I think it's like Greg or something. Um, he took I think forty percent. He still owns like forty percent of yeah. The, his his side of the company mm -hmm. type of thing, but um, uh, Samuel Adams has now majority ownership of of them. I'm, I'm sorry, it's a squirrel. Okay. Yeah, I know it really <laughs> is like you, one thing, and then he runs across the room. Yeah. Um, number four, or was that number? F that was number three. So that was yeah, number, number four. Oh yes, it was number four. number uh, four. Uh, Ballast Point Brewing uh, being sold uh, again. Again. Now the reason this was a big story was because all the way back in 2015, Constellation Brands, which is a uh, a global con conglomerate of of beer companies and uh, more recently cannabis companies, yeah, um, bought Ballast Point Brewing for one billion dollars. Yes. Uh, they then sold them off for 136. Yeah. Million, a huge drop. Thirteen cents on the dollar. Yeah, when you're and, talking and, about a billion of them, and to yeah. a tiny craft brewery in New York. Yeah, a very tiny one. Yeah, uh, 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 who? Yeah, it was like who? I I know local breweries here that are bigger than them. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, it's like our friends own breweries I, that are bigger than that one. I know one particular guy who started a brewery in his garage and now owns a bigger brewery than who just bought Ballast Point. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> yes. Exactly. And so it was just like, who? <laughs> he, he does more barrels per year than they do. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but I guess I guess that that brewery has a big investor friend. Who's uh, big enough trading Fortune five, Fortune five hundred stocks? Yeah, and so uh, he basically funds them. Yeah, so 
So, someone asked what's up with the camera lenses. Uh, CES is next week and I've been packing. Uh, one of these is one of my new lenses. I actually just got this on Monday. It's uh, Tamron's 10 to 24. Uh, and couple that with uh, a speed booster on my on my Z cam, and oh my goodness, it is wonderful. Uh, you can't have my beer. People get banned on Twitch for giving their cats vodka. You can't have my beer. <laughs> what? It, this is my beer. <laughs> That's more expensive than that vodka, probably. Mm -hmm. No, you can't have the beer. I know you're cute as a button, but you can't have it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Hey, so, hey. Number, <laughs> getting, getting down to it. Don't so get can, me demonetized. We can get you in all into the tech news <laughs> that we all bugger. know you want on. Uh, number five was actually the uh, selling of New Belgian Brewing. Yes. This one was kind of a shocker um, yeah. because there was no rumblings about it, no rumors. It was just, mm -hmm. bam, they're done. Um, usually there's at least a couple of weeks where there's like, oh, there's a potential buyer. Or, or New Belgian's like bankrupt and they're going to sell. Yeah, New or there's a big like, reason why. Right, they're, they're, they're trying to, you know, come up with capital or something like that. This was literally just a press release announcement that said uh, New Belgium's been purchased. Yep. So, uh, this was back in November. And so, uh, and then we can, they, well, and then the big part was that New Belgium is... Um, employee owned. Employee owned. Yep. And so, we talked about this on the show again, where the vote finally got through. And basically, all the employees, they made out. And they're keeping all their jobs, too. Yes. So it's a employee run, employee owned, and um, a lot of the people are making like three to four figures. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, no, good, good for them. That was a, a nice bit of news in November. Yeah. Uh, number six, I actually didn't read this one. Um, uh, number six was actually the c closing and uh, and repurchasing or saving of America's uh, old or one of America's first craft. Independent craft oh, brewery, right. no, Boulder, Boulder beer. Yeah, and so they were announced that uh, we talked about it again a while ago that they were shutting down basically all production. Mm -hmm. um, they shipped to almost all fifty states, ish. Yeah, uh, yeah. They 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 sold off their production equipment. Yeah, their, their barrels, their everything, and they said, yeah. "Hey, we're only brewing stuff for our tap room at the brewery, and yeah. that's all we're going to be doing from now on because that's all we can do." And a last-minute backer basically saved them. <laughs> and uh, uh, <laughs> sorry, we have a couple donations. Uh, big big spoon, white claw, no law. That's right, two ninety nine <laughs> donation. So thank you for that. And uh, bite my bits wants a, a seven dollar Nickelback boop. No, <laughs> his you, price his price is higher. No, no. I, I boop John. I don't get my finger back. He, <laughs> he's a drummer. He could snap me like a twig. Man. <laughs> <laughs> you give me some of your subs to go onto my channel. You can boot me all you want. You you boost John to thirteen hundred and 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 I'll boop him. Yeah, you do that. You start doing that. You yeah. do that. I'll bring a six pack of Bud Light Orange on this show and we'll drink it. I'll make him drink. Don't it. Don't you rope me into this. I'll make him. This drink is it. all on you. I, yeah, fine. I will chug a six pack. There you go. <laughs> there you go. I will do a video saying Bud Light Orange is the greatest orange or uh, Bud Light beer there is. <laughs> Recommended <laughs> number one on my page to all my new subs. You got to go he uh, head to head with the Clamato though. <laughs> no, 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 no. I tried one before. If, I, I literally if you want to fight dirty, I know I, how to I, fight dirty. I almost vomited trying a Bud Light Clamato. You yeah. you talked to Chuck. I really did. <laughs> I like I spit that thing out yep. so fast. That there are very few things that I refuse to drink, like gun to my head and if it's like 36 degrees i'll drink a bud light i'm not happy about it i don't really enjoy it i don't want to it's wet that's all yes. i can really say for it uh if it's 42 degrees i'm out yeah no i mean if i'm gonna drink that it has to be ice ice cold like, like go ahead and pull the trigger yeah. i'm out at 42 yeah I i'm done uh, <laughs> there's nothing worth living for two dollars 69 cents boop jeff boop jeff <laughs> his show <laughs> you, you got kitte on the show yeah what, what more do you want out of me exactly and uh the number seven the very last one is low calorie beer has mm -hmm. been a big thing this year apparently yes so trying to lose that weight yep. low calorie beer yep. not low flavor beer like bud light but low calorie <laughs> um and a lot of the the brands uh they did something interesting they're not really marketing these as 
as session beers because typically a session beer has been the lower calorie, the yep. lower ABV. Um, you know, something like a a, a session pale. Uh, what is that? Uh, uh, the one from Founders. Oh, uh, all, 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 all day, all day, all IPA. day IPA. It's a four point two percent IPA. Yeah, uh, that is technically a low cal IPA. Yeah, it's a hundred calories. Right, it's and like a hundred and two. Yeah, uh, for for a uh, for a pint of it, and for, so or twelve ounces. Yeah, twelve yeah. ounces. Um, so you know they've done this kind of thing for years, but all of a sudden they're changing up the branding, and instead of calling it a session beer or a yeah. you know they're, they're all of a sudden branding low toward toward the locale, toward the light beer market. Yeah, it's people so, that like I want to still lose weight, but I want to have that but, flavor. But, but I still have taste buds. Yes, exactly. Uh, it it is it is not the whole Budweiser thing of. We're going to post our ingredients and calories on the box and bottles now. No, you still taste like nothing. Uh, it's just rice and water. No. Um, here is, you go through the all-day IPA. There's hops. Here's, you know, all the ingredients. Malt. Um, so it is good. And you, there's other brands, there are other flavors, too. There are, um, oh, gosh, what are those um, saltwater ones? Um, sa they're sours. Why am I forgetting my beer now? I don't oh my know. gosh. Gozes. Go, yeah. Gozes. Gozes are very low calorie, low alcohol. Goze. 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 But um, Sea Quencher by Dogfish Head is another one that's always been a low calorie. It's like a 95 calorie, yeah. uh, 3.5%, but it has flavored lime. It's kind yeah. of uh, a lime and salty. She's yep. clawing my leg. <laughs> hey, everybody. Hey, kid. <laughs> All right. So that is the top seven. Uh, shocking beer news of 2019. The the one that I'm surprised didn't make the list was the Bud Light and corn syrup controversy. Yeah, you know, well, you know, maybe because it's still going on. Yeah, <laughs> it, 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 ongoing litigation. Yeah, uh, but uh, I'm really surprised that one didn't come up because that was a that's a major slugfest between Miller Coors or Molson Coors now. Yeah, uh, and 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 InBev uh, just between the two brands. You know, trying to duke it out for marketing share and and InBev fighting a little bit dirty and Molson calling them out for it. Yeah, and um, and they won actually. Yeah, they did. partially. They yeah. they won of uh, saying that they have to no longer sit there and say um, no longer contains um, <laughs> squirrel, <laughs> yeah, corn sugar or something like or yeah, corn syrup, and uh, implying that corn sugar is bad for you. Right. Yeah. Um, uh. Jason says, Jeff has more subs than me. He has reached a stronger whore him out. Ha ha ha. Um, yeah. Remember, Jason, I haven't even produced videos for like six months and I still have more subs than you. <laughs> I took a whole half a year off. <laughs> Sucker. <laughs> Although I will state his New Year's episode of the cool dancing versions of himself for every people that bought. It's like, well, Jeff should do that. I, I should have done that. Yeah. Uh, now, you've seen the epic bar and bartending that I do on New Year's. Yes. I think I'm going to live stream that next year. That would be, that'd be I, pretty I cool. I think I'm just going to do Jeff Q&A bar stream there bartending you, there live you stream. Go. Yeah. What drinks do you want me to make? Hey, call them out. Or 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 just just talk about stuff and then while you're making drinks. Yeah. Uh, and, and my bar is a, it's a $200 bar. Yeah. Uh, I, I spent $200 on ingredients this year, liquor included. Uh, it doesn't include my supplies, like my shaker and my stirrers yeah. and, and glassware. Which you already like own. Which I already own, but you know, if you do this enough, you own the materials. But uh, yeah, uh, I, I did a 16 bottle bar for about $200, $210. Yeah. Um, we had all the garnishes. We had pretty much any drink that you wanted. Uh, it was pretty incredible. Uh, about the only thing I was missing was some of the real specialty liqueurs, like... Uh, uh, Cointreau or Midori. Or, yeah, how many know. cocktails? So, you, yeah, this right. Is that one-off cocktail. They'd like right, half uh, ounce. Uh, right, <laughs> unless you have some like fascination with melon liqueur. The, and the thing is, though, half the people that are like, uh, I want a gin and tonic. Right. Oh, you know. I did so many Cosmos this yeah, year. It's just like, I, I did Cosmos, and I make one heck of a mai tai with uh, a homemade orgeat syrup and uh, and a, and three different kinds of rum. Oh, nice! And uh, it, it's a fantastic cocktail. You know, one thing we didn't do though, we didn't talk about the beer. We didn't talk about the beer, and I've just been enjoying it. It is very nice. Um, it's not very boozy. No. Uh, and what booziness is there is smooth, easy it's drinking. It's very, very smooth. Uh, lots of chocolate. One, one thing about these beers is uh, they the fresh batches typically have a little bit of a sharper flavor. Yes. And, 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 and I don't mean like super sharp, super boozy, 
But if you let them age for a couple years, like I have a 2016 in my fridge that I guarantee is just velvety smooth. Oh, probably. At yeah. this point. But uh, but the brand new, new batch stuff, the, the 2019 release, drinking it three months after release, um, it, it usually has a little bit of a sharp, you know there's booze You there. taste the barrel. Right. You taste the barrel. You taste the booze. Uh, you know it's it's a double digit beer. This yeah. one's what twelve five thirteen thirteen yeah thirteen three. And this is a Heaven Hills bourbon. Yeah, um, but uh, this one is smoother than I remember new batch stuff being before. Yes, I think this one is actually better because we I think we had an original uh, last year. I, I've had a twenty seventeen and a twenty eighteen on the show. Yeah, and so I think the twenty eighteen this is better than the twenty. I think so too. From my recollection, yeah. I mean. <laughs> it's kind of hey, hard to go off of front. Oh, sorry, fourteen seven. Whoa, fourteen seven. They, they upped it even. So almost, almost fifteen percent. If we're yeah, rounding up, their standards are usually like twelve eight to thirteen so, five. So this one bottle, yeah, it has probably more alcohol than a six pack of Bud Light Orange. You're pretty darn close. You're really <laughs> close. In fact, <laughs> trying to do the number in my head. Oh God. I'm assuming that uh, Bite My Bits shared that uh, that video in his Discord, and you all are coming to haunt us now. <laughs> Which one? Uh, tequila and peppermint schnapps. Oh, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. He and I were talking about it on Twitter earlier today, oh, and God. so I sent him the link to the video. <laughs> and now I have people going, tequila and peppermint schnapps, come on. That was the nastiest thing. That cost Joe $250 on the stream yeah. to get me to do it. You donate $250, I got the liquor right yeah, there. Yeah, I mean, you do that, I'll do it. I got it right there. Someone throws up $250, that's what it is. Now, now keep in mind, it was $100 at the time, but it was cumulative because he had already donated an additional $150 before that one. Yeah. And then, because we did the shot, he donated another 50 So he donated $300 on stream by himself. That's so, what it takes to buy a tequila and peppermint schnapps yeah. shot. We, by saw, the way, it's called a Colvin. Get it right. <laughs> I saw all your, your super chats and everything on your New Year's. You could afford it. Yeah. Jason, you got this. If you want to see tequila and peppermint schnapps, I know you got the scratch. <laughs> I watched your stream. You can, you can, <laughs> your, your server can wait a week. <laughs> Uh, enjoying a Belgium gum, uh, a Belgium drop here. Uh, Tun drought at 66 C. Nice, mm, nice. A good Belgian's always nice. Okay, uh, uh, tech news. We are a little behind. A little behind. A little but, behind, uh, but we don't have super a lot. We do have some. Yeah. Um, so we're getting ready for CES here. There has been a little bit of uh, of leakage prior to CES, and we're going to kind of go over that here real quick. Um, but uh, probably the biggest one is one that we kind of knew was coming already. Um, and uh, that is that ASRock actually leaked the Radeon RX 5600 XT and its specs prior to any official announcement. Now we knew AMD was probably going to come up with some kind of a middle ground card somewhere between their... Oop. Oh, you <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching Talking Cats, episode 113. <laughs> and I'll never be back on. <laughs> John is going to be buried in my backyard. Um, anyway, uh, so we knew AMD was probably going to launch some kind of a mid-tier card, something between the 350 and the and the 199 yep. price point. Um, and uh, it appears it's the RX 5600 XT. Now, the interesting thing is this has the exact same number of cores as the, the RX 5700. Um, at 2,304 cores. Uh, now, all the other specs are a little bit stripped down, and it seems to be mostly on the memory that they're taking the hit. It has six gigabytes of GDDR6, but it's 192-bit instead of 256-bit of memory bus. Um, also, the uh, the clocks on the card take a pretty significant step yeah, back almost, as well. Almost half. The, uh, they're not half, well, but it's they're... Two, uh, 288. Uh, the, well, the max boost clock... Um, oh yeah, yeah. The, the full memory bandwidth full is, me yeah, is, is about two half. thirds. Yeah. Um, and then uh, the boost clocks on the cores take a significant step back as well, from a seventeen twenty five max boost all the way down to a sixteen twenty. Um, and uh, the base clock is also down uh, two hundred and thirty megahertz as well. Uh, so kind of an interesting move. Um, I think if this is priced competitively, and and when I say competitively, I mean like two forty. Yeah, I was thinking the 250. 240, mark. 260, somewhere yeah. right in there. That has been a really sweet spot for AMD to hit over the years is about that price point. 
And um, that's a good price point too because it's not yeah. bottom of the tier. Right. It, it is a mid decent mid tier. I'm like covering my beard because I, I don't want fur in it. But it is a, it is a decent. Uh, mid- interesting thing. He's long hair, but he doesn't shed. Oh well. I, I've been holding him. Look. Yes, it is a kitten. There's not what no. He won't shed. Okay. It, it. It's the it, he's a Siberian cat. Okay. Uh, and so. Uh, Trust me, we paid extra for this. Apparently, cat breeders are a thing. Oh. If that puts the price point into perspective. <laughs> oh, it wasn't like a free kitten and a no. bin type thing. This was a my wife sought him out, asked like five breeders in the area. One of them happened to have one kitten. Oh, for sale. I, I thought this and was we like bought. Our, I, our friends have a box of litter. No, and... I drove three hours oh to go God. pick this cat up. Was this a uh, Christmas present for the kids? This was a Christmas present. Ah, uh, this makes more sense now. Yes. Um, but we wanted a specific kind of cat. Apparently, it's the cat for dog lovers um, because it's it's a very social cat. Mm. Uh, it's not the I'm going to sit on my perch and and you will worship me for yes. you know meager human. Um, this is the uh, boop. Oh dang it! It wasn't on camera. Hold on, I got to get it. Ready? Boop. There we go. <laughs> we booped the cat. Okay. Uh, He's the kind of cat who will come greet you at the door when you get home. Mm. And in fact, I opened my daughter's room uh, earlier today, and he was up in her loft space, and he came barreling down there and like <laughs> flying across the floor. Uh, he he is a very social cat. He loves being around people, um, and he will follow you around like a dog. Uh. Um, and and he will play fetch and, and do all kinds of things. He he wants human interaction. Uh. Um, and he's long hair and doesn't shed, so he's super cuddly hey. and. Wants beer too, apparently. Yeah, it, he's got good taste. Yeah, I'll, I'll say. Give him that. He's he's got a great name and he's got a great nose. Um, yeah, but just, yeah. just sit there and be perched. What's the most you've ever paid for a cat? I bet I win. <laughs> like people pay me for a cat. <laughs> right. Here, take a cat. Here's twenty bucks. Yeah, that's that's, 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 that's usually that's, how that's I get usually my how cats. I get people get cats. Is right. that I'll pay you. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've never had to pay for a cat before. Yeah. Uh, we paid two fifty for our rescue dog. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to say your cat. I was like, oh my gosh. And I'm just from your noise, it's like it was more than the, the cat was more. Yeah. All right. That's all you It was four fifty. <sighs> you know how much beer that could have bought? Yeah, I do. My Z cam was still slightly more expensive. Yeah, I got it. But I, we were trending close to that. <laughs> Hey, I got a new rabbit. Is win really the right word? His name is still Rambo. I won, dang it. Yeah. <laughs> His name is still Rambo. It's still a cool name. Although uh, the, the kids and the wife, I'll call him Rammy. Don't get in my my pelican case, cat. Come on. I got to get him out of there. <laughs> and he's out. Oh, I, I'm going to close it. Oh, okay. Um, you have thoughts on the, the AMD card? No, other, other than, you know... It, AMD is just pretty much killing it in a lot of areas, and these are the new graphics cards that are coming out. Um, it, the price point, like I said, it's going to be a nice mid-tier price point. It's one of those I want to go above uh, base, like right. the, the minimum I need, and they're they're going to meet that need. Yeah, you know, you want that little bit extra, two fifty if it is that price point, the two forty, two sixty, mm-hmm. maybe two seventy uh, if you throw in like something cool with the you know package deal. Yeah, uh, I, I would like to see 270 or less on this card. I, I really want to see them finally undercut the competition a little bit, not just match them. Yeah, um, not, not be like, we're a dollar less. Right, and, <laughs> and you've got the 1660 Ti and the 1660 Super sitting right there. You've also got the RTX 2060, which which does pretty well. I want to see them completely undercut that entire segment you, of graphics. You want cards. it to be to where, buy our card, and the money you'll save, you'll be able to buy a game. Right. Something like that, or package or, a couple free or, games with it as well, or something. Maybe do that on you top know, of it. You two, know, two two forty nine plus whatever. For our last season, uh, you know, last year game on there, t- Tomb Raider and a Rainbow Six. Yeah, something you like know. that. You know. Um, that's what I'd like to see out of AMD. I, I want to see a little bit more competition on the graphics space. And you know what? They they do that. They have been doing that. <laughs> Are you ready to go out? I will get the producer to come get you. Yeah. I, I will get the producer. I, I get it. I hear that sound. <laughs> that, that is the I want out sound. I'm bored now. I've, I've seen everything here. This bores you me. You think she'll get the point? <laughs> <laughs> 
I am bored now, human. Release me from this prison. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what that, that noise was. All right, moving right along. Um, so I sent my wife a text that said, Kitty, Mew! He's <laughs> <laughs> got his toy now. Yeah. <laughs> right, by right, the door. right by the door. <laughs> he just found his feather, so he's good for another 30 seconds, but... And he's behind the door. Come on in. You can get him. Yeah. You're not on camera. The camera ends at the table. Okay. You're yeah, good. It ends right. Can't, good. can't even see the mic. Yeah. There you go. Bye, kids. Ah, <laughs> uh, Rambo, everyone. Uh, let's see. Joshua Cook, two dollars. Drink Backwoods Bastard by Founders. I've had that one. That is a great beer. Great beer. It's a great. I believe it's a strong ale or a, a barley wine, something like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, really good. I think it's classified as a strong ale, yeah. technically. But no, fantastic. fantastic I've, I've had yeah. that one a number of times. Yeah. And then, and then uh, uh, Rita. Uh, new studio looking great. $2 donation. Thank you so much. I've uh, been working exceedingly hard on it. It's finally starting to shape into something. Um, no, the last uh, the last video you posted, the, the build, uh, l the studio looked really nice mm -hmm. behind it. Mm -hmm. The lighting looked really cool. I was like, oh, that, that looks really nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of doing... Uh, the two segment stage kind of thing where this half of the room is one stage and that half of the room is another stage and I can just put the camera in the middle of the room and kind of rotate, rotate it to whatever set that I want. And this table is not bolted to anything. It's completely movable. Uh, the only thing on it is my mounted monitor and the and the, uh, Mics. the mic arms and super simple to move. So if I need more space, just slide this to the side or slide this to the other side of the room and no. shoot that way. Um, so... Gives the studio really two completely separate looks and uh, should be pretty versatile. Plus, I have my editing rig back up and going with my 43-inch LG monitor, and I freaking love that. Uh, that was that was the first mo uh, video I've edited over on that screen since before I moved out of my house uh, six months ago. So, yeah, it's been a time. Uh, by the way, three days from now marks the six-month date that I left my house. Oh, I, yeah. I moved out July 5th. Oh. So... It, it's this has been a long long time yeah uh and, and a very yeah you only did what like two videos I, I i did like eight eight or nine i had a couple hit really well uh with the uh the tesla and the nvidia grid cards yeah and then you did the uh uh led um uh case oh yeah yeah did the in win uh the 309 in, yeah um, yeah, so I, I had a couple, yeah, a couple, couple good ones. videos in there. I had a couple not so good videos in there. <laughs> um, I had one of my worst performing videos like of all time in that session as well as part of like that eight or nine videos. Um, uh, Two dollar donation make Rambo a permanent stream cat. Uh, he is my daughter's cat, and he does sleep in my daughter's room. So I don't know if that's an option because she goes to bed at eight o'clock. Um, but uh, he will probably make uh, multiple appearances. Multiple appearances. I'm, I'm sure he'll be around, and I'm, I'm going to try to sneak him into some B-roll every once in a while, just for the fun of it. No, let's, Kenny, let's... this is not. <laughs> <laughs> get it, get it, get it. Uh, what's the point of having a cat if you can't put it in B-roll and, and right and pour him out for views? <laughs> Sit there, seriously. And, and then this cooler even blocks cat hair. That's right. <laughs> All right. Uh, moving right along as that turned into all cat talk. <laughs> Thanks for subscribing to Cat Facts. Uh, you skipped one. No. You didn't? Oh, then... Oh, no, sorry. Yeah, sorry. I, I switched him up on your side. Oh, I wanted okay. to talk about him in a different order. Okay. You're good. You're uh, good. Uh, AMD News. Sticking with AMD News. Okay. Uh, AMD Radeon RX uh, Navi 21 base cards. So the cards that have been coming from AMD have been the Navi 10 based cards is what they're calling them. Uh, and this is the RX 5500, presumably 5600 and 5700 series cards. Um, supposedly, AMD is going to de be debuting a Navi 21 series card uh, with nearly double the die size yep. of these other cards. And as a result of that, double the performance. And double the performance puts it up in 2080 Ti level territory or possibly slightly beyond. Uh, now these are going to be fairly massive GPU dies. We're we're talking like the difference between an AM4 and a Threadripper chip. Yeah. Uh, as far as you know what they are, <laughs> going going back to the old uh, 
uh, GTX 280 and you know GTX 200 series mm. days when they they were like 600 mil dies, <laughs> 505 millimeter dies. Yeah, it's gonna look like a card or a deck of cards. Yeah, yeah, they are going to be impressive to say the least. Um, but uh, this is also going to be done with AMD 7 nanometer plus uh, manufacturing technology. Yeah, so uh, so a little bit more refined off their their original uh, uh, Navi 10 based cards. Uh, we don't know exactly when these are going to be arriving, but we do know that they're aiming for between a 275 and a 300 watt TDP uh, on, on the card. So they're, they're targeting a pretty high uh, wattage video card. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, it's going to be RDNA version 2 where it comes out and when it comes out we don't know don't know but probably sometime in 2020 i don't know if we will see an announcement next week at ces although i do know amd has a press conference i believe monday evening um but uh it'd be it'd be interesting if they announce this while they're still sending out uh or still manufacturing their navi 10 based cards um I, if I had to guess, I would think this is going to be more of a Computex announcement. This is going to be more of a May announcement for like a Q3 release. Yep. Um, that's that's my bet on these cards. I, th I think we're still a good six to seven months away from either release or announcement of a Navi 21. But it's good to see AMD pushing forward. And it's good to see even rumors that the technology is that scalable because that's been one of AMD's biggest advantages on the CPU front is the scalability of their architecture. Oh yeah. Uh, the 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 scaling from literally the two and the four core dies in the the Ryzen uh, uh, 3400G and the and the the uh, the Athlon 3000 all the way up to the 3950X at the 16 core level, 3960 and 3970X at the 24 and 32 core level. It's the same chips. It's the same manufacturing technology, just more of it. Uh, you putting more of it and, and putting you know I/O controllers on where you need them. Um, so that is probably the most exciting thing about AMD is the insane scalability they're showing with their new architectures, both CPU and hopefully this generation GPU. <laughs> just people are talking about the cat still. <laughs> yep, we're talking about the cat. Uh, uh, Reagan $2. Reagan $2 donation, hashtag cat computing. Uh, let's see, uh, Rambo Kitty, craft computing mascot. Uh, and John wants me to borrow. A, a la Gamer Nexus uh, <laughs> Snowball. You know, as soon as we got the cat, I thought this could be my snowball. <laughs> <laughs> I could totally make this a snowball. Um and apparently these cats live for like 20 years too. So if he becomes like a studio cat, it's totally going to be... Snowball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let John borrow the cat, then maybe uh, it will help with his channel. You... I, I actually have a rabbit. You have a rabbit. I have an actual rabbit. Why do you yeah. think I had that logo? Was because my wife... That was the only way I can convince my wife to let me buy beer yep. more than I already you was. You need to introduce him as a mascot. Uh, yeah, we just got a new rabbit. You too. absolutely do. So, uh, and this the, one, the I channel think... needs to grow with him. Yeah, put it on his shoulders. I don't, I don't like the rabbit. <laughs> it's not a bad pet. It's just, uh, yeah. just me, or do all the big tech YouTubers have cats? Uh, I've had dogs almost exclusively for quite a number of years. Uh, we did have a cat, uh, my wife and I, for the last seventeen years. Um, she got him a couple of years before we got married, and then he lived with us. Uh, we got married in 2006, and, and he lived with us for, uh, gosh, 11 or 12 years combined. Uh, so it's it's been uh, it's been a couple of years since I've had a cat, but uh, I've always considered myself more of a dog person. I do have two dogs. I think um, I have three. Uh, we only have two. Oh, okay. Yep. I think of the other other house yes you had, yeah you're... yeah that, that was my in-laws dog in -laws we did dog. have three for a while living under the same roof yeah. but no we, we have we have the two dogs we have a, a 60 pound aussie shepherd and some kind of terrier either a pit or a boxer mix yeah she is she thick boy yeah <laughs> as they say uh she is all chest and all all upper body yeah um yeah she her, her chest is all pit 
Her nose reminds me a little bit more of a boxer, and she knows how to use her front feet, and so it, it makes me think she's a boxer. Uh, but uh, she's got that Aussie Shepherd look. She's got the the brown and black patch over one eye, and then white over the other one. She's just adorable. Uh, and then there's Zeke. He's the uh, the runaway uh, that we found, or the one who was dumped on our doorstep uh, New Year's Eve two years ago. Yeah. So. Yep. So I have three animals all under two and a half years old. <laughs> Uh, then, uh, Big Spoon, uh, that's not funny, meow. Uh, no. <laughs> and then questionable commands for Rambo, see link in Discord. Okay. Oh, I'm... that's right. I don't even have the Discord no, chat on. Oh my up. gosh. Hold on. Hold on now. There we go. Uh, see super chat. Oh, for Rambo. Oh. <laughs> the flannel. Uh, eh. I don't know if he's a plaid cat. I don't know if the plaid would work. It's not bad. No, but he, you don't go for a bow tie with a cat named Rambo. You gotta go right. for like a headband. You gotta go the headband or or the the camel or bandana. Only, yeah, the camel bandana, the, like the, a, the a ammo strap yeah. or something. Yeah, you, you, you gotta go the camo sash. We'll get him. We'll get him like a a, shoot, uh, a, a toy knife to play with. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's not. That's not bad. I I, I could see that. That looks like more something for your dogs. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my, my little dog would probably wear that. My little dog's only like 18 pounds. He's, he's, yeah. uh, he's technically a cat. <laughs> he's technically a cat. Uh, so yeah, hopefully, uh, like I said, I don't expect a launch or even an announcement for AMD uh, beyond maybe the RX 5600 series. Well, maybe something during the summer. Uh, m probably more Computex. Com more, so like more May, spring? May, very late spring, early summer, mm -hmm. maybe a Gamescom. Uh, you know, sometime between May and August. I, I Quark 2? Yeah. I, I imagine we'll have some news from AMD about their next-gen graphics cards. But but not now. Uh, moving Speaking on. Of graphics cards. Yep. Uh, NVIDIA has a little bit of, uh, of news that's leaking uh, based on their upcoming Ampere. Uh, Ampere? Am M M Pre? Ampere? 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 <laughs> I, I, I don't... I've been calling it Ampere since we leaked this back in like March of last year. Yeah. By the way. Uh, back when uh, it was rumored that Ampere was going to be the 1100 series, and then they were also working on a 2000 series. They've been working on both architectures side by side, both Turing and Ampere side by side. And so there was questions on which one is actually going to be released, and Turing ended up winning out with the RTX cores. Uh, Ampere was supposed to be the true next generation successor to uh, Pascal. Um, and the news coming out of Camp NVIDIA anyway is that the new chips are reportedly... 50% faster at half the power consumption. <laughs> See the quotations? Ooh. I highly doubt those numbers. It might be 50% faster with half the power consumption at the same die size. That would make sense. Uh, if you have the same number or the same size of die on the, on the GPU. So if you're talking about a, a 400 millimeter square die, you're talking about those kind of numbers. Yeah. But Core to core, no. <laughs> You're not going to make a 50% improvement year generation over generation. Yeah. It's just not going to happen. 10, 15, sure. Right. Yeah. 15% is considered pretty darn good. Yeah. 20% uh, is nearly unachievable generation to generation. Uh, Pascal saw over a 20% increase, and it, that's pretty much the first one in history, which is why the 10 series is so lauded. It is so highly regarded. Uh, well, is. maybe it's fifty percent faster than the original. Yeah. <laughs> fifty percent faster and more efficient than a GeForce Two. Yeah, I mean, it didn't technically say what it was fifty percent faster of. We kicked the crap out of that MX four forty. I tell you what. So yeah, it could be true. Jensen with his pop leather jacket. <laughs> Oh, this is getting better as it warms up. It is actually. Oh, it's, it's so good. This this is tasting like a nice cocktail. Yeah. It, it really just is. has that nice booziness to yeah. it. It it 
I know alcohol doesn't warm you up, but this is warm. <laughs> My cheeks are a little red right yeah. now. Yeah. Um, this this reminds me a lot of like a Manhattan, like a, a good straight up Manhattan. Yeah. What? Yeah. What I really like is what you said earlier is you you taste that booze, you yeah. taste it, and but it so well complements yeah. the other. Notes. This, this one, I don't think the boost flavor is diminished at all versus the previous ones at the same point in the series. Um, what I think is it's better complemented by some of the other flavors. Yes. Uh, the, the the other ones, the boost stood out just a little bit more. It was a little bit sharper, a little, that, and I think that's the best word to describe it is is it had just a little bit of a sharper taste. If I remember correctly, last year was two different barrel agings, and then mm -hmm. they mix them, and this is a single. Single Heaven Hills. Okay. Oh, it's only Heaven Hills. Okay, gotcha. And then last year was 50% Heaven Hills, 50% something else. Mm -hmm. um, that could be the issue. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanna, I actually also want to see Bourbon County 2018, what the percentage was. I think it was a 12. No, 14.7. Really? So same same percentage. Wow. So I'm just, I'm, I'm, I think I'm thinking of the 2017. Yeah, I think so. I, I they do, it, it varies year to year. Yeah, it does. So, uh, yeah. It gets better as it warms up. That's what she proclaimed. <laughs> uh, okay, I think we're thinking 2016, and that was a 13%. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. So, but yeah. So, which we, uh, you and I actually both have bottles of. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I have a variant that you don't have, though. Um. I no, I think I traded someone else for it. Did you? The the blue box? Yes. Yes, I do. You I have. Son a, of a I have more than you. I have two variants. Of, uh, I have no three years of that. Well, mine's in the other fridge. But yeah, I have three years of uh, that. I thought I had you. Nope. I I have the same one. I traded someone else. Uh, you got yours for free. I had to work for mine. <laughs> uh, Dang it. Uh, but no, that actually, but that variant that year. Yeah. My personal favorite. Yeah, I had it. I had it once on draft. Mm -hmm. I, um, a tap room in Eugene just happened to have it. Yeah, and I didn't even know it at the time. I was like, "Yeah, I'll, I'll take some Bourbon County." Right. And by the way, it never. Not even the regular version shows up on tap very often. No, not um, on. Uh, there's, there was out of all the tap rooms here in Oregon, mm -hmm. maybe twenty. Yeah. 20, you know, you know, twenty cakes in Oregon and, mm -hmm. and everything like that. But you gotta understand how many tap rooms there are. 20 tap rooms in a single town. There are 20 <laughs> tap rooms within driving distance for a nightcap for me from my house right now. Yeah. So, uh, Not I know. Not just places that serve beer, tap rooms. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, it, it, it's it's still pretty Not talking hard Applebee's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not talking that. I mean, my old tap room is not far from your house now. No, it's not. Oh, sorry. <laughs> the original talking. We'll just refer to it as the original talking. Head the original studio. talking head studio. Yes. I think it has more clout as that. It probably does. Yeah. <laughs> not amongst beer drinkers in Salem, though. Yeah. It is pretty. It does still have a pretty legendary status for the taps you kept. Yeah. It so is. people still talk about that. And and what's nice is. Uh, uh, I still have original customers that go there, and the, the guy that bought it says he's still treating it very well. Yes. So that's nice. Yeah, and, and that's what I've heard as well. I've been I've been back a couple of times, and, and they definitely know the Skull friends. still has maybe by a mile. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Skull is the one who got you your and me. Yeah, some he, he got me my blue label. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the proprietor. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 <laughs> FYI, they're talking about the Bourbon County proprietor. John literally beat you to it in the comments by about a half a second. He said proprietor, and I went whoop, <laughs> and yours popped up. So, so he does know the name of it. Yeah. Uh, um, I am all done with mine. Okay. If we want to, we can switch to something else. Okay. Um, I have a couple different options for you. Okay. Uh, so I've got a like one light beer in there. You know, yeah, I, I know. I, I tried looking for a lighter beer, too. The reason we're having lighter beers is because this is a 14, almost 15%, yeah. so we're yeah. not going to go for another double IPA. Yeah. Uh, I have to drive home. Yeah. Jeff doesn't. Right. <laughs> so I'm going to have the double IPA. Yeah, and no. John's going to have I mean, tonic if you want to do that, that's no. fine. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, honestly, actually, if you got, do you have tonic? I don't have any tonic. Water. Okay. Um, 
Uh, tell you what, I got something for you. Just something light. Just yeah. something light. All of light, light is good. Light and breezy? Light and breezy. Uh, I'll be happy with that. Uh, let us know if you are drink. what are you drinking on the chat? We never even talked about that, so are you on your I first drink? I think I drink? gave one shout out. Yeah. Uh, are you on your first drink, second drink? Let us know. It doesn't have to be alcoholic. It can be Bud Light Orange. It can be coffee. It can be whatever you want it to be. Burns! Burns, yeah. It was so smooth transition, too. Uh, I think he's gone right now. <laughs> um... He lives in the Midwest. There's nothing else to do. Right? Yeah, that's true. He's, he's probably working on that 30 terabyte or what, 300 terabyte. It was 284. Whatever, yeah. 284. He said he could bump it up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let us know in the chat what you're drinking. Also, if you don't mind, join the Discord. It is a dollar minimum. You can always do more. We constantly talk about what we're drinking Talking head topics. Uh, Jeff has early posts, stuff he's working on. We have uh, trade. Um, it's a fantastic community. It's what, almost 200? Uh, 100 and, I think there's 128 active right now. Active right now. I, I, just I, had, like, I had like 135. Okay, so, so but it is, it is one of the most active uh, Discord uh, community. I'm even on Bite My Bits Discord, and ours is more active than his. Uh huh. Um, they actually gave me a free membership. Oh, did they? Yes. So. Honorary membership? Honorary membership. I can't post certain things, but, uh, you know, what do I... Right. You know, I got it for free, so. Yeah, what do you want? Yeah, exactly. I, I just basically mock him. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, um, yeah. As Jeff is going through his portable bar now, left over from uh, New Year's. Yeah, it wouldn't be funny if I had a Jeff just planted a white claw. He probably does still have a spare one though somewhere. I don't actually. I do. I saw one. I know you. Do. I'm aging it. I know you are. I want to do a. I want to do an oak chipped bourbon barrel aged white claw <laughs> video. I'm saving it for that. That would be fantastic. <laughs> Let's see. All right. Classic Iced Tea by Patrick. Rum and Coke. Regan. Uh, I do love a good rum and Coke. Adam with a... Uh, probably move over to Adam's Winter Lager. You know, actually I haven't had a Samuel Adam's Winter Lager in a long time, so I don't remember what that tastes like. Oh, Sal's debating opening up a 2016 proprietor. Ooh. Uh, you know what? How about just mail it to me so I can have two of them? <laughs> Why open it when we could uh, when we could share it on the show? Exactly. Yeah, that's what I say. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Skull, that is the only bottle of the batch that you sent me that I did not open. So this is uh, uh, kind of a, a self-made drink that I really like. Uh, that is, this is about an ounce of gin, about a, we'll call it a splash of amaretto, oh, um, about a, uh, about a quarter ounce of amaretto, half and half cranberry juice and ginger beer. What, and what gin did you use? It is pretty strong. It's actually just Gordon's gin. Is it? It's okay. just London dry Gordon's it is, gin. It is, uh, very juniper on the nose. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. It, it, the, the it just kind of does this. Yeah, it, it really dances does. Around. It really does. Like, you taste cranberry, then amarillo, and you're like, what is that? Yeah. It kind of works. Yeah, you do cranberry, then amaretto, then it goes back. Oh, there's juniper. Oh, there's the cranberry again. Yeah, it's like, this. It just dances. Kind of works. It's so good. <laughs> it doesn't seem like it would work, but this is actually a, a pretty well balanced mix. Uh, and it's not that much alcohol. Like yeah. I said, it's about an ounce to an ounce and a half of gin, and then just a splash of amaretto. Um, you can use uh, Di Sirono, or I actually use a much cheaper alternative uh, called Diamore. Oh, yeah. Um, which is about $10 a bottle. And and as a liqueur, I don't like spending more than 10 or 12 or $13 on a liqueur. Yeah, I mean, half the time it's half ounce anyway. Right. Yeah, yeah. It, it's just a splash. It's just there for color or flavor. Yeah. So, but... Uh, uh, what someone says, I love the color. It looks like Wisconsin tears right now. I gotta say. Mm. <laughs> yeah, the 
one point really kind of screwed them. Well, that was the defense. Well, that's what happens when you kick three field goals. Well, no, they. I thought it was two, and then or did they? Or was, yeah, that's right. Wisconsin got two field goals. Two. Yeah. yeah. And then fumbled at their own twenty. Yeah, that was stupid. Or no, it was their own thirty, and then something uh, like that. But that was close. What I find the most amazing stat about that game is Justin Herbert is the active passing touchdown leader, and he ran for three scores. <laughs> uh, John Jay is having Founders Breakfast Stout. That nice. is a great... I nice. actually do have a video coming up. Uh, I don't know when, but I have all the ingredients planned and at my house. It is a Canadian Breakfast Stout clone. Mm. So I'm going to try to attempt... To do a Canadian breakfast stout clone. Nice. And see how well that comes out. Uh, incidentally, when I feel like I need a beer at work and I can't drink, yeah, I do cranberry juice and ginger beer. Really? Completely virgin drink and uh, it, just a mocktail, but it, it's fantastic. It always comes out though the ginger beer. It's what ginger beer you have because yes. you kind of almost need a spicier one to really yeah. kind of get that cocktail base. Yeah, the the cockabull is pretty good. Um, I've also gone the fever tree. Yeah, is a really nice one. Don't don't skimp on a ginger beer. No. Uh, don't buy the big two liters or, or I don't even think they make a two liter, but don't buy the cheap six pack for one ninety nine. Right. You know, it's basically pure sugar. Uh, this was uh, twenty four dollars for a twelve pack, something like say. that. Yeah, I think they come yeah. in like four packs for like ten dollars. Ten bucks, yeah. 10 it, bucks, it's craft like. beer prices. Yeah, exactly. But that's the thing. It is. It's a craft cocktail mm -hmm. use. Um, or if you want a virgin cocktail, something mm -hmm. that it's still it's going to give that to you. Eleven ounces, twelve ounces, twelve ounces, twelve ounces. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and you didn't use all of that for both of these. So, <laughs> and it's spicy. I don't know about these those Discord comments. Bite my board, bite, bite my bits. Discord is pretty neat. Uh, big big, if uh, you want to join my Discord, jump on over to my Patreon and uh, and I'll show well, you what a good Discord. Yeah, is. we'll show you what a good Discord is. <laughs> it's only a dollar. That's right. Uh, it's a dollar per video, and you can set whatever max. But one dollar donation per month gets you access to the Discord. Or more. Um, uh, right, and and at the moment I don't have any other rewards for going higher. I, I don't I don't do that. I, I like just building the community. Yeah. Um. So uh, not that there's anything wrong with that. I, I do plan on expanding the Patreon later on to include higher tier rewards. Yeah. Uh. But yeah. Just you were go busy on. moving for the past six months. <laughs> right. I I've almost taken six months off from the channel minus the live stream. Yeah. Um. So only eight of the last twenty six weeks have I produced a video. <laughs> Yeah, Scala, Scala opened a 2018 18. Bourbon Gown coffee, coffee bar. barley. Oh, I remember that one. Yeah. Oh, that one was good. Actually, I just picked up, actually, which I think was the worst of last year's series was the Bramble. I think the best one last year was the was the wheat wine. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyways, so. No, I, 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 I'm a sucker for the coffee. Oh, so. yeah. Jeff, you can't have Big Big Spoon. He is ours. <laughs> All right. So, hey, hey, hey uh, Big Big Spoon, DM me on Twitter. I'll give you an invite. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give you an invite. <laughs> Get on John's Discord. Yeah. It'll, be, it'll just be me and you. Yeah. It'll still be better than Bite My Bits. <laughs> Hashtag Team Bud Light Orange. Uh, I'm going to see Jason in Vegas. And uh, please, please take him to like a tap room. I'm going to. Oh, that that's a that's a craft computing video no, in itself. There, there's a uh, there's a venue in mind that I have for for him. Oh yeah. Uh, there's a uh, a restaurant. It's an Italian bistro called Bootleggers that oh, specializes I, yeah. in Prohibition era cocktails. Yes, yeah, I've heard. Of oh that. my god. Um, I want to go to this year's now. So, uh, so we went to Bootleggers twice last year. I, I met uh, one vendor there. And then uh, we did an after party there. So we went, we all went out to one of the, the nightlife parties. And then me and uh, Rhett and, and two of the vendors uh, uh, came back. Two of the, the, the vendor reps went over to Bootleggers. I think we dropped a $350 tab on drinks. <laughs> it might have been pushing four even. It was, it was high. Yes, for four people. So basically, 100 bucks uh, per, per, per person. Yeah, it was about $100 in drinks per person. Yeah. Yeah, it was insane. <laughs> and they were phenomenal. <laughs> uh, 
And they have good beer there, too, but but their cocktails were... Oh, good. yeah. I mean, you're going to... Ve- yeah. Actually, that's what I hear, though. Vegas isn't known for its craft beer. It does have some, uh-huh. um, but, it, I mean, you have so many bars, so many good mixologists. I, I'm in Nirvana there as, yeah. as a cocktail I, I, I mean, that that's really what more Vegas is. I yeah. mean, you can go to any any casino, and they probably have a really good mixologist at some point there. <laughs> you're going to kill Jason. <laughs> <laughs> I don't doubt it. Oh, you know, it'd be a great video. Oh, 4%. Okay, here, try one of these, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> I could do this all night. <laughs> all Apparently, right. you can't, though. Yeah. Switch them. Jason, I will drink everything that you used to drink, and you drink what I do. Right. Let's see you do a live stream. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what. Yeah, this 300 terabyte, let's crank it up a bit. Is that we're going to some bit? <laughs> so you know what? Screw these dancing digital music. I'm going to dance right now. Uh, what car are you wanting to rent, if any, for CES? Oh, crap. I, I remembered that you drove last time. No, I didn't drive last time. Last year when I went with Rhett, there was a threatened government shutdown the week that we were in Vegas. And in fact, some of the flight towers had closed around the area. Now, McCarran Airport stayed open, um, but uh, there was a threat that there would be no air traffic controller, therefore no flights coming out of Vegas, coming out of CES. Oh, yeah. um, and, and we were kind of a pawn in how big is the government shutdown gonna be? We'll tell you what, we're gonna shut down McCarran and strand a million and a half people in Vegas. Yeah. Uh, so th- it was a real thing that could have happened. Now, we rented, uh, the first year I was there, I rented a, a Nissan Altima, and that was wonderful. That was wonderful to drive around. Uh, last year, um, I booked a little bit later, and I didn't get a good deal, and I just bought whatever the cheap economy car was, and it was a 2017 Nissan Versa with a CVT. <laughs> so, I have never a, driven a more gutless so car in 75 my life. 75 horsepower. <laughs> 75 horsepower with a CVT. <laughs> and so you're trying to merge with traffic, and it's going And you're floored. Yeah, my foot is on the floor, yeah. and this is what the engine is doing. Yeah. As, as that band, that rubber band ex- expands and contracts and pulls those pulleys in and whatnot. It, it, it was a... I've driven snowmobiles. <laughs> I've driven paddle boards that are faster than that. Yeah, ex- exactly. Um, and uh, it, it was horrible. But uh, during the entire trip, Rhett and I were making comments about how we should review the rental car while we're there. <laughs> because it was just so horrible. And then uh, the idea came up maybe like on Wednesday that if we have to drive back, if, if we're stranded here and I have to extend the rental and I just have to drive back to Portland, we'll do a road trip and we'll do an extended review of the Nissan Versa. <laughs> but we'll do it in like a, we're trying to prop it up with the tone of our voice, but we're actually like slamming the car. The 2017 Nissan Versa for when you need to get somewhere, but not very fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The 2017 Nissan Versa holds 1.5 adults comfortably. <laughs> yes. You know, yes. crap like that. They can tow up to 100 pounds easily. <laughs> Average American, 195. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Spare tire, extra in the rental. Actually, all we had was the inflator pack. We dug all around the car. <laughs> so, so no, that, this was really a thing that we considered no, doing that, if that's we called had to drive back. Weight consu- they're, they're, cur- yeah. they're, they're really... Uh, no, watching the weight of that car, they want yeah. to give that primo uh, uh, MPG. Yeah, we, we had the carbon fiber pack too, believe it or not. I mean, it, it was something else. <laughs> Came with a compact disc uh, inserter. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the fourth gen Ultimus have have CVTs. The fifth gen and up are a lot better. Yeah, uh, and the one that I had was a 2016 or 17 Ultima, and it, it was it was an automatic. It was a, it was a four speed automatic. Um, might have even been a five speed. Um, yeah, modern uh, torque converted autos are a godsend. Yeah, uh, my wife has a 2008 uh, Mazda CX-9 all-wheel drive, and that automatic is a joy to drive. Mm. And I don't say that about many crossovers, let alone many automatic transmissions. And that car is legit a joy to drive. Uh, rent a Mustang. The problem is I'm hauling around three people in total. Three people with baggage. And three people? Yeah, three people. I'm not going. You're not going. 
Rhett's not going. Your uh, wife's no, not going? No. no. We're getting a new host? I, I have someone meeting me in Vegas. Uh, Skull? No. <laughs> uh, first time CES goer, TechTuber, mm. who will be joining me the entire trip. That would be cool. Yeah. So, uh, if anyone's followed my channel long enough and, and you've followed me on Twitter long enough, you might fathom a guess at who it is. By the way, it's not Jason, uh, but you're on the right track. Uh, yeah. So, you'll just have to see on Sunday when he lands. Because we're getting there Saturday, he's getting there Sunday. But we're staying in the same hotel, we're going to all the same places, we're probably going to be in each other's videos all week long. So, it'll be, it'll be a whole thing. So. so Steve gets to be in two people's videos. <laughs> or film two people's videos. Uh, Skull, you missed the Amaretto. There's also a splash of Amaretto in this. BPS Customs? No, BPS Customs is a longtime CES goer, although you're not bad. Uh, Skull, I'm guessing Epos Fox. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. But speaking of YouTubers... Speaking of YouTube in general. And in, in general, too. Um, so there's been a bit of controversy as far as YouTube goes with the uh, COPA. For those who aren't aware, it's the Children Online Protection and Privacy Act. Yeah. Um, uh, basically, YouTube in my... Uh, or OzTalks Harbor. I believe OzTalks went to CES last year, so he's not a virgin. Um uh, but uh, I will be meeting Oz sometime at CES, I believe. Uh, I, I think he and I were going to try to hook up. Um, there you go, Skull. Thank you. Uh, Big Spoon, CES in Vegas, but can you LTX 2020? I am certainly going to try. I saw the dates were announced the other day. I am blocking them off in my calendar, and I'm going to start looking at accommodations. Uh, so it is certainly... Uh, top two on my list of where I want to go in 2020. Um, uh, I will definitely be going back to PAX Northwest or PAX West in 2020 though. We're going to go back up to Seattle here in September. Um, Cause that was a heck of a lot of fun. That was, we missed last year. We missed last year. I, I missed the media deadline and I was like, screw it. I'm not going to You, that. we every, honestly, it wasn't even just you. Everyone yeah. on, on the whole crew. Was I would guess Tom Lawrence. That's a good guess. That's a good. good guess. That's a good one. Yep. You'll just have to wait. Yep. Yep. So you'll just have to wait. But that's a good guess. Uh, actually, I was I was talking to Tom earlier today on on a couple different things. Uh, he and I are are definitely working on something. <laughs> I can tell you that much. We don't even know yet, but we're working on something. Um. But anyway, uh, Copa has been in the spotlight of YouTube lately, mainly because YouTube had to pay a $150 million regulatory fine for advertising and tracking kids online and marketing to kids when they shouldn't be marketing to kids. Yes. Uh, it is not allowable by law to market to someone under the age of 13. Um, and uh, if you're a user on YouTube under the age of 13 and YouTube is trying to sell you products and targeting you based on your age... That's not allowed. Yeah. So if you're, well, though, then it'd be really weird, though, if you're a eight-year-old, nine-year-old, ten-year-old, and you're sitting there and seeing, here's a NAS device. Buy this. Right. You know, not that. There Welcome are... back to your craft. Exactly. Everyone. <laughs> exactly. Well, it's not necessarily that. It's the fact that they were integrating ads for kids' toys into, like, PewDiePie videos. Yeah. And, and, and things like that. That's what they got dinged for, was that they were taking these personalities who skew towards a younger audience, say say the 10 to 13 year olds, and they were marketing items specifically to those 10 to 13 year olds, yeah. which is not allowed by law. Uh, what about that British or Australian guy that you that you that featured you and several other people in uh, one of his Your Reflection videos? Uh, you mean Andy from eTechnics? Uh, I'm meeting up with him for dinner on Saturday. Uh, I've known Andy for a couple of years now, and uh, I actually met him at CES two years ago. So it's not Andy, but that's a great guess. Um, is eTechnics who you're going with? No, no, uh, he's great. 
Uh, in fact, I met uh, uh, Yes Man. I met uh, Yes Man at CES last year. Mm. Uh, so it's not Yes Man either. So there goes your Aussie and, and Euro connections. It's Ops and Brews. It's Ops and Brews. <laughs> Virgin. <laughs> oh, I mean, he's never been to CES. Or both. Or both. <laughs> but you have a kid. Is it mine? Uh, that's a good question. Huh. The alcohol was really good that <laughs> <laughs> Anyway. Um, so YouTube has caught a little bit of flack because COPA... Uh, now, someone says COPA is a huge government overreach. I disagree. I disagree wholeheartedly. Because... There are numerous regulations on what you can and can't advertise on TV at during programs that are marketed hours. to kids yes. oh, I mean, and during particular hours. Yeah, you so, know, the 10 o'clock hour, you see completely different commercials on TV. There, Nick at Night was a thing for a reason, not only because they could show adult programming, because they could sell adult advertising on Nick at Night. Then. Yeah, and then there are other shows that have more adult advertising. <laughs> so <laughs> Right. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I don't agree at all that COPA is a huge overstretch. Um, a, a government power because you do need to rein advertisers in and you need to set proper guidelines for what's allowable when you're marketing directly at a kid. Now, whether or not the kid encounters the advertisement during whatever time of day, some of that's up to the parents, some of that's up to the networks, but at the, at the end of the day, you still need to have regulations that say you can't throw on a sports betting advertisement on, on Nickelodeon at 11 a.m. Yeah. You know, or... You can't throw a Nissan... Well, I mean, a Nissan car is fine, but uh, uh, alcohol, beer, Bud Light. A, a, a Bud commercial Bud, on Disney Channel, on Disney at, Channel at 3 yeah. a.m. Yeah, 3 p.m. Um, but uh, yeah. can I ask a question? Go ahead. I'll try to answer it. Um, <laughs> but uh, so I, I disagree that it's an overreach because that still applies on the internet uh, as far as things that are geared towards kids. Even uh, a lot of radio. Even a lot, yeah, radio has as copious amounts yeah. of regulations and red tape uh, for, for what's allowable to say and do and advertise to and what your target market is and et cetera, et cetera. So no, it, it is not an overstep at all because those things do need to be regulated. Otherwise, people will take advantage of them or display inappropriate content. Yeah. Um, and I don't mean inappropriate from like a super conservative, yeah, you know, it, naive it, standpoint. I mean, there's no reason a sports betting page should be advertising to kids. Yeah. Um, you know, it just shouldn't happen at content that is generated specifically for kids. And that's what YouTube got dinged for. Was, uh, was not only they were uh, listing advertisements in videos that were aimed at kids. So you will go watch a Frozen 2 video and up comes a... Uh, I don't know, an online service ad of some kind. Yeah. Or, you know, uh, so stuff like that. Um, did you see what happened to the Nissan CEO this week? I didn't catch any of that news. Interested in that. Curious. Um, uh, boy, you're over my head. I have a dual 8180 Xeon, my Linux kernel not seeing all cores. How can I recompile the kernel? I have never compiled a Linux kernel in my life. Uh, so you're asking the oh. wrong guy there. Uh, I, I do jump into Linux stuff and I do work on Linux professionally, but I am not a Linux dev and I am not a Linux enthusiast. I'm, I'm a Linux user. Totally could, could, could qualify me as that, but that, that's about the end of my scope. Um, anyway, uh, YouTube, it was rumored as a response to COPA. Part of their response has been Instead of taking on the onus themselves of saying we're going to self-regulate our own advertisement, we're going to make our own function. The, the, the creator. We're, we're going to put it on the creator, which is not the way the regulation is written because the regulation says the content host, not the content creator, is responsible for the content delivery. But then YouTube was arguing that it's uh, we're an open source platform when they're kind of bending the rules not to be, mm -hmm. and then they backed off of that, mm -hmm. and then they banned over it because someone else complained about something. Um, but this is also part of a complaint that you and I also have of a lot of the new upload features and, and new regulations of YouTube is now wanting all uploaders to state, is this video meant for children or not? 
mm-hmm. and uh, it, it's super annoying for any content creator on YouTube right. of another step. I have to right. take this, and actually, I think there's like two steps you have to take. I'm I'm now a little bit worried about some of my content. Now, I I do mark all my content not safe for kids uh, or not intended for not kids. intended for kids. But I do work in kind of a crossover environment where some where I do do gaming content. I do do PC building content that could. As an eight-year-old, nine-year-old, ten-year-old kid, I was digging for information yeah. on how to build a computer. And there's kids out there I, like I, me. I know lots of twelve-year-old kids that are on like, I want to build YouTube right. or, or build PCs, and I go on YouTube to learn how to do right. it. And if they go on Jeff's channel, see him drinking a beer, I'm suddenly in violation of COPA laws. Yeah, because I created content that included content that is intended for kids while drinking an alcoholic beverage and technically promoting alcohol. Yeah. And so this could actually have ramifications for my channel. Um, but uh, the story here is not about that, that side of things. The story for, for YouTube is the YouTube Kids application, the YouTube Kids site. Uh, YouTube apparently considered a course of action of screening every single individual video that was going to be presented on YouTube Kids. Um, their algorithm would have been 100% wetware driven. It would have been literally employees that they hire to watch YouTube videos to say, yes, this can go on YouTube Kids or no, this can't go on YouTube yeah. Kids. It would be uploaded and then 24 hours later, approved Yeah, type of a thing. Um, I wonder, my thought though is then, do they get more clicks and views for that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> for those people watching? It was like, does that boost the algorithm up? <laughs> Um, are you considering Floatplane? I have submitted my application to Floatplane. I am waiting to hear back. Um, I submitted I, mine. Too. I, I don't know that I'm going to do Floatplane until they have Discord integration. I don't want to charge people money without giving them some kind of bonus ad. And right now, my bonus ad that I can guarantee is Discord. Um, it, it is a service that I am on all day long. Yes. Um, and and John, Rhett, and Steve are also on it most of the time. Um, so that is my value add right now that I can say for if you give me a monthly stipend, I can at least reward you with some bonus content. Yeah, you got bonus content. You got basically almost 24-hour access to one of the four people on Talking yeah. Heads. Maybe yeah. not Crackle Kidding, but Talking Heads. Yeah. At least 20 hours of the day you get talking or crack computing. If you at me 18 hours of the day, I will respond. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. I'm like a 12-hour guy. Yeah. Yeah, you and C were both 12, but you're opposite 12. Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> great. And then Rhett, Rhett's in there like for gaming and every now and then he'll, yeah. he'll, he'll throw in some music stuff. You're like the sheepdog and the wolf changing places yeah. in, in, in the Looney Tunes cartoons. Morning, Joe. Morning, Bob. Morning. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, the reason YouTube decided not to go this route is if they went this route, they would then be culpable for all of the inf- or all of the promotions that they made within YouTube Kids. That yeah. They verified the information, and it was, if it was found to be in violation of COPA law, they'd be liable for that. Well, then they would be considered like more of a media channel, not yeah. an open source platform. Correct. It would it wouldn't be AI driven, and it wouldn't be you know a, a an open friendly channel for all for cameras. all content it, it would be it would be curated media driven content instead yeah and they didn't want that classification so they left it alone and then in response to that they also put the onus on content creators to validate their own content which then pisses off half the creators <laughs> right and like i said i'm in kind of a precarious situation uh, i i need to figure out if this is going to really impact me i don't think it is i think it's just another bubble that i'm gonna have to check on youtube now by default my default setting is my content is not made for kids yeah however i do have one video where i'm building a computer with my six-year-old yeah and but things in that you're not drinking beer i'm not drinking beer so I, and you, i specifically didn't drink beer in that video yeah so you could at least click that one yes so you're yeah, and I don't know how it affects your channel versus, epi- you know, uh, versus episodes or whatever right. videos. Don't know. There are ramifications both ways. I know EposVox did a great uh, summary of what the new Copa changes are. He's much more involved in the media creation and the creationers. Uh, creator side of things. There we go. The creationist <laughs> side of things. Creator <laughs> side of things. Uh, <laughs> That's the wrong word. That's the wrong word. Hold on. 
it'll come. It'll, there it is. There it is. Uh, he's much more involved in the creator side of this industry, and uh, and he's a great resource for stuff like that. Uh, and I know he did a video specifically on Copa. I believe he also had a blog post on TubeBuddy uh, oh. about the new Copa changes. So go check those out. Um. Yeah, but in the meantime, we're all kind of getting screwed by who knows what <laughs> from YouTube. What else is new? What else is new? What else their, is new? their algorithm changes yearly. Yep. Monthly. Uh, Apple being accused of stealing once again, this time from a New York University doctor who is suing over Apple Watch's ability to detect atrial fibrillations. Yeah, so apparently that he is suing over proprietary technology that he invented back in well, i think he said 2006 mm -hmm. that uh tracks the time between the heartbeats mm -hmm. to just basically to figure out if you have an arrhythmia or not yeah and a very similar thing is how the apple watch which is a big claim that buy our apple watch because it can save you it is ekg level heart monitoring and yeah. it can actually detect anomalies within your heart and and help keep you alive and he truly admits that this is a good thing right but I invented it. Right. Not only did he invent it, he shopped the technology to Apple. Yeah. He said, what's your price? What, what, you know, what will you be willing to give me for this technology? I think it would be a very simple integration into the Apple Watch. Here's what the technology is. And they said, thanks, but no thanks. And then lo and behold, a year and a half later, the Apple Watch has atrial fibrillation detection yeah. unbeknownst to the creator of this, of this algorithm. Um, and uh, and they refuse to disclose how they did it. Yeah, and they are not responding to any of his uh, requests or anything yep. like that. Um, yep. Unfortunately, I, I'm betting that they're hoping he's going to run out of money because yep. I mean it is Apple and they have they can literally like let's wait years on this. Right. Um, you know, let's just drag it out. Yep. And I'm yeah, Apple is just not looking good in my opinion. Uh, no, in, in, well, in but it's, not, it's not a huge ordeal, right? But it is a Apple's starting to move in the area of universal technology. I think mm -hmm. it's everyday wear, not just computers. It is watches, TVs, entertainment, uh, household smart tech type stuff. And when they're starting to claim that their technology can help potentially save your life, which it already has claims too of this watches watch and technology has saved lots of people's lives supposedely mm -hmm. uh, pre-detected -deter right. um but i i think they're trying to save face here mm -hmm. um i i don't think it would e even if they admitted hey yes we took it or yes it's very similar <laughs> right or quietly it's not going to ding them so i don't really know what what's going on on their end that just seems very odd to me. It, it seems like they would just, okay, let's pay him off, and then now we can have this patent, and, and then lease the patent behind this guy. Now right. we have a patent from this that's that's doctor approved, and whatever, right. you know. Yeah, no, 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 yeah. Blah, blah, blah. It's been tested since 2006. Yeah, so th this, is a, this is a story that's gonna have two sides to it. Apple's gonna come out and say, well, we contracted with this other doctor yeah. that had da, 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 and he had b -b 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 qualifications and then it was certified by the FDA and da, 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 da. it's it's going to happen that this is going to be a long drawn out fight i don't know if we'll ever hear a conclusion because they may just settle out of court and that's what i think is going to happen right. but i'm wondering how long it's going to take yep uh, and how much money the other doctor has to really like do does he actually care mm -hmm. because he even did state that he cares more the fact that Apple is helping people. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that was like the last quote of the article too or something, something along that side. <laughs> like... a second. Oh. <laughs> that, that is worth $6 of saying. <laughs> uh, do you want any more from your LS or is that enough? Uh, so, uh, uh, Big Spoon, $1.99, Apple. Okay. That's, that's cool, man. <laughs> uh, new member, uh, Conrad Jackson, uh, just watched the new upload. Wanted to say thanks for your previous free NAS tutorials. You are very welcome. 
uh, made life a bit easier than reading every page of the documentation when I recently built mine. And that was kind of my goal with creating the tutorials in, a first, in the first place. Um, was simply to, to go, if you just want a file server and you're not concerned with, uh, with snapshots, you're not concerned with this, you're not concerned with that. If you just want a bigger storage pool that you can share between a couple of computers, here's how you do it. Well, and, and then you can build off of that. A lot of people, that's what most people want to start off with. Yeah. And that's what's nice. That, that's what's nice about that tutorial was. It yeah. was just, here's the basics, here's the beginner, boom, here you go. It's very simple, follow these like, five steps. Right. Um, yeah, so gonna be interesting to find out what actually comes of this, if anything comes if of anything, this. I, doubt, I honestly doubt we'll hear anything. I, I don't think we'll hear anything other than like a, a boilerplate, this was settled out of court. Yeah. Uh, um, with no conclusion. So. Uh, so John, you didn't get to go to CES last year, but I think you were part of the wrap up show. I think me. I was, which I didn't understand half of the stuff you <laughs> were talking about, which half the time I don't understand half the things on this show anyway. That's all right, you're here for the beer. That's right, that's all I'm at. John's just a pretty face. Uh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, last year, if I had to take anything away from like the main show floor, what the big thing people were trying to push was. I had a couple of takeaways. Number one, OLED was supposed to be big. It wasn't quite as big as I hoped it would have been. And it wasn't quite as cheap as they had promised it would be, but it really never is. Uh, the big takeaway that I saw that people were ooing. really pushing and really ooing and aahing over, and the thing that took up literal like city blocks on the convention square floor, like seriously, this this one company rented out a 100 by 100 foot section of the convention <laughs> floor, which is freaking expensive uh, to promote their foldable LED screens. Um, and to be clear, here we are in 2020, it's 12 months later. I don't know a foldable screen. That's... What is our experience with yeah. foldable screens thus far? We had the Samsung Galaxy Fold, which didn't they recall? Which broke on arrival. Yeah. Was completely dead on arrival. They then had to recall all of them, including from the reviewers, because they had like ex left pieces of the hinge exposed and, and the, the LCD itself didn't have any kind of cover or dust cover. And so as you open it and close it and get a little bit of pocket lint or pocket sand yeah. into it, um, it was going to break. The mechanism was prone to failure. Uh, not only that, but the membrane on the top of the screen that actually made the whole thing actually foldable looked like one of those temporary screen protectors that comes on every brand new cell phone you've yeah, ever bought start, ever. Yeah, it started getting bubbles in it, if I remember correctly, too. It started getting bubbles, but not only that, the reviewers went, oh, look, there's a protector on there. And, oh, crap, I just yeah, I know. They're, yeah, exactly. They're like, there were like four videos and then and then i remember samsung releasing notes of saying do not do this like too late you know like you sent this to me right you sent this to me with you know and and and, and i'm looking at it and that's a that's a cover no it's not okay well, yeah it's like as soon as you peel that away samsung was saying warranty over yeah you know well not only that it it, it destroys it, it, the screen yeah it uh, it didn't uh, none of the fingers would work it actually took part of the um, the lighting off or the sensors part off. It was horrible. Mm -hmm. um, wasn't it Emerson or what battery company? Their foldable phone, they had the super big battery one and then the foldable phone. Oh yeah. Um, or is it EG? I forget. But uh, their, their foldable phone didn't even make it onto the market. No, there's a couple of them. Uh, you're thinking of the Energizer. Energizer, phone. Energizer. Energizer was going to come out with like a 14,000 milliamp battery phone. And then they had a foldable one too. Right. Uh, Huawei came out with a foldable tablet. And there's been a couple of those that have kind of made the market. Um, but as big as that tech was, I mean, and it was, it was prominent on the show floor. You couldn't go 50 feet without seeing another version of a foldable screen yeah. uh, last year. Um, and LG had their entire canyon scape that you walked through that was nothing but bent OLED screens. Um, and it was flipping beautiful, by the way. But, um, yeah. It, uh, it, it's set up once and don't touch it. Yeah. Uh, 
But yeah, you don't hear anything about those anymore. Yeah, so that that's the tech that was kind of... 2019. 2019. It, it, yeah, if we were talking about big shockers of beer, this is the big shocker of 2019 of tech. Right, exactly. Um, uh, open that. That window so I can actually see the rest of it. Um, yeah, I think this is all on foldable screen. So yeah, uh, just scroll through this list real quick. Okay, so Royal had the tablet. Yeah. Which was a, uh, that was the three-way foldable one, wasn't it? I think so. Yeah, that was, like a, that was a, a trifold and, and tablet, which by God, that's going to be that thick when you're done with it. Yeah, it's a bigger than your wallet. Yeah. This is totally going to work, guys, I'm yeah. telling you. There's Samsung's. Yeah, the Samsung Galaxy Fold. Which didn't actually have a full screen there. And the Fold 2. You know, when they actually launched it. Uh, there's the Huawei tablet, yep, the, right the Mate X, that's right. That's the big tablet. Yep. Uh, so 10 inch foldable Oh yeah, the, there was this, the Motorola, Motorola Razr. Hasn't launched yet. Hasn't it's launched, they delayed it forever. Yeah. So, but apparently that one is still supposedly coming out. It's still supposedly coming out. $2,000 though. Yeah. Right, like I'm already a little bit averse to buying high-end smartphones. And someone asked earlier, is this a, a Google Pixel 3a? It is indeed, very good eye. Uh, I, I rock a Google Pixel 3a now. Um, but, uh, yeah, I looked at the original Motorola Razr uh, revamp the screenshots and renders when the news broke, like, literally a year, year and a half ago. Like a year and we half started ago. talking yeah. about it on this show. Because I went, that'd be a super cool idea. I, I like the concept. I don't know if we'll ever see it materialize, but, but it, it looks really cool. cool. Um, I, I like the idea of it. Um, but uh, I went, yeah, for, for, and at the time, because this was before we were looking at like $1,400 for a high-end smartphone, we were back in the eight or $900 days. I went, yeah, 1000 bucks. I could totally see myself rocking that. Oh, yeah, because we- $2,000! Yeah. yeah. No, this- $2,000! I mean, the idea of it is still really cool, but $2,000. And then the specs that they were releasing for it wasn't, I mean, it was crappier than half the phones that were out there. It right. was the thing. It wasn't anything super special other than that it was a foldable yeah. phone. Right. Uh, hey, Jeff. Uh, how was the noise level for the HGST drives you mentioned in your last video? Honestly, from about four feet from it, I could not hear them spin up. There was a noticeable bit of vibration when all eight of them were going. But when the computer's starting, especially with SAS drives, because these ones were actually the SAS variants of them, uh, you have a real high motor spin up and you can hear each one of the eight drives spinning up as the SAS controller starts to recognize them. Um, that is inaudible. And once all the drives are running, all you hear is the clicking. You don't hear really much vibration, if any at all. And, and I'm talking like from me to John yeah. levels. Um, I didn't know that they were running until I started installing FreeNAS and it had all of them recognized. <laughs> Or yeah. Proxmox, the Proxmox server one. I could see all eight drives were there as well as the NVMe. So, so if you have it across the room or across your desk, yeah. you'll probably be yeah. So the links that I provided uh, in that video were for the four terabyte drives. In my FreeNAS system, I run the six terabyte Helium SAS drives. Uh, and those have been phenomenally reliable. I have six of them in my FreeNAS server and another two of them in my backup server. Um, and, uh, and they are phenomenally good. Uh, Speed-wise, buffer size, reliability, noise, all of the above, they're amazing drives. Even refurbished, and for, I think I paid like $110 a piece, between $110 and $130 uh, for the Yeah, you got, you got those out of deal because I remember like a uh, couple, two, three months after that, yeah. they were up 20 30 bucks. Yeah, they were back up to, to $150, $160. Yeah. They're back down in the 110 range. Okay. Uh, 110 120 so. So go yeah. pick those up. Yeah. Uh, did I pick up the Google Pixel 3 XL? No, this is just the standard Google Pixel 3a. Um, uh, mainly because the XL I thought was a little bit big. Um, I, I like a pocketable phone. I, I don't like these massive tablet size phones. I have a tablet. I don't need another tablet that I stick in my pocket or rather fail to be able to stick in my pocket. Yeah, yours isn't any bigger than mine is. Uh, this is the uh, S10. Slight, I mean, Slightly bigger. Yeah. But not by much. Well, you have a case on yours? No. Okay. Mine's naked. Well, here, here's mine naked. Okay. I mean... Uh, yeah. It, it's that. It's that. I mean, it, you, it, you can it's see It's a sliver it. on but, the side. But did you see my... You see my line? I saw your... I saw your <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, right. I can't. 
<laughs> I am Bender. Please insert liquor. <laughs> yep. Uh, I have two HDST, eight terabyte mirrored, knock on wood, still good after two years. That's been my experience. I've been running my six terabyte drives for actually two years this week. Uh, this week I actually did my uh, free NAS build two years ago. Uh, so yeah, mine have been running very, very strong um, and they've been absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah, all right. Uh, ba, 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 ba. What else we got? You you put some food news on here. I did, because this one was interesting. I, I thought. I guess for maybe I for thought. for you. I thought. I mean, if you don't want to do it, I, I would. I, I mean, if you want to do it, it's fine. Yeah. I mean, it, this 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 kind of hits home for you more than me. Well, it kind of hits home for me, but at the same time, this was debuted at CES. This was CES news in 2019. This, that's stupid. Okay. This came out at CES. Well, yeah, from what I... La yeah, Not okay. during CES. They announced it at CES. <laughs> okay? I mean, if you want to do that, it's fine. So that that's why it's on here. I thought this was like a new Burger King thing. Uh, but... Actually, it is. They use these. Well, yeah, but that, no, this one, the new one. Right. So No, the 2.0 came out last year. So, oh, okay. So, so 2019 CES, Impossible Burger Corporation or company or, or Impossible Foods. There we go. Yeah. Uh, announced the Impossible Burger 2.0, uh, this time as a gluten-free, completely vegetarian, vegan-free option, or, or vegan-safe option. Um, and the reason I included this was it's kind of one of those things that doesn't really fit food news and it doesn't really fit tech news because it's an artificial, plant-based amalgamation of burger-tasting stuff. But is it crack news? You know, actually, by definition, I think it, it is. It is. By, de it by totally definition, is. I would say this is crap yeah, news. It totally is. Um, so uh, I, I have had one of the Impossible Whoppers. I really liked it. Really? I didn't care. It's not that I didn't not like it. It was just like, it's all right. It but wasn't was... any better or worse than me pulling up and saying, hey, give me a Whopper. Well, the problem is, though, I think the Burger King I go to is a horrible Burger King. Yes. And and then that's the thing is you, you if you get a fresh, I think if you, if I was comparing a fresh, that perfect Whopper yeah. in my head. The one on the picture. The one in the picture. And, I, and you know, you get that one out of 50, maybe, yeah. you know, um, versus even the best version of the impossible one, yeah. which I only had a bite of one. So yeah. it doesn't. Um, I probably still go for the regular right, one, and know. and but the thing is, it didn't like wow me or anything like that. But yeah, but at the well, same I time, like... but at the same time, I admire how well it's gone at um, producing a, a a a patty, a vegan patty that has not only made it to market, but is starting to infiltrate major food chains yes. beyond store shelves. It, it's it's actually a story. Yeah, no, well, the only thing I've noticed is, uh, coming back to the taste, was that it's a thickness. And I think the reason why for fast food, mm -hmm. because you'll notice their patties are a bit thinner. And I think that's why mm -hmm. it, 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 the flavor goes goes by. The thicker these, the what are the impossible patties, whatever they're called, are, that's where people start really tasting the difference. Because mm -hmm. um, it, it's more of a texture. Maybe not a flavor, but it's like, this doesn't taste like... Right. You know, it's like a too <coughs> texture more All right uh for those who don't know my wife has celiac disease um it is an autoimmune disease that attacks her uh small intestine the cilia in her small intestine um it is it is what gluten intolerant people are afraid of uh gluten intolerance really isn't a thing i i don't mean to throw anyone under the bus but gluten intolerance in itself is not a thing uh celiac disease absolutely is a thing yeah um, that that is, that is like the I have a cold of celiac. <laughs> right. <laughs> kind of like oh, boo, right. boo, I'm sick. Oh, does this have gluten? In it? <laughs> right. And, and 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 we live in Portland, and and it's kind of a hipster thing to be vegan. And and oh, I don't want any gluten. Megan and Hunter can't have it, that. Is it all? Is it all farm to table? Right. You know. Yeah. It, it was the hipster thing for a while, but the thing is, my wife was diagnosed in 2003. There was no such thing as gluten free in 2003. There's no such thing as a hipster. Do you know what it was? It was me and my wife reading store shelf labels 
and we literally had to memorize ingredients lists and there were like 250 US ingredients yeah. that had that contained gluten <laughs> and we had to know what every single one of them was and when I'm out shopping I had to sit there and read the label um, because of the hipster well I gluten's a bad thing now um, all of a sudden, products are now labeled whether or not they contain wheat or, and, and in some cases, well, gluten. Which is a good thing, I think. Which is a good thing. It's I, totally yeah. a good thing. Um, and, and it's actually opened us up to being able to eat out occasionally. Oh, yeah. Know, yeah. Go, yeah. Go, you, go. You, can, you can have your burger, right. whatever you want, and she can go have a burger too? Well, not the, oh, there, a there lettuce wrap burger. Right. There were six or seven years there where we couldn't eat out. We couldn't go to Outback Steakhouse yeah. or Applebee's or... I mean, well, Olive Garden, yeah, or Red Lobster, and, or wherever else. And literally now, you can go to fast food places, right? Now that have gluten-free options. 100%. The the night I proposed to my wife, I went up to a fancy restaurant in Portland, and uh, and this was supposed to be a place that totally accommodated to every single need, every single taste, etc. And I let them know before we arrived that I'm going to be proposing to my wife, or my my girlfriend at the time, and uh, which feels weird. 16, 17 years later to say that. Uh, my girlfriend at the time, uh, now wife, um, that I'm going to be proposing. I want the night to go well. My wife has celiac disease. She is gluten intolerant, gluten incapable. Um, I need good menu options. I need the waitress to be accommodating. I want this to be a, a very smooth night. Yeah. So if you can give a heads up, if you can, you know, whatever else. The waitress the entire night had not a, a single clue what even had wheat in it, let alone what had gluten in it. Um, and kept trying to press the lava cake to my wife as, as an after dinner option. Like, uh, ooh, I can't have the salad with croutons on it. Like, I thought I was pretty clear about that. Yeah. Right? Well, I can just take those off. No, I can't because... It's already, there's crumbs in it. There's crumbs in it. Um, and by the way, uh, if, if... And the salad dressing probably has gluten in it too. Right. And, and my wife... Uh, when she first got diagnosed, the doctor said if it was a scale of like one to ten, your disease is a forty-three. <laughs> That's where it rated on the scale. So literally, a crumb will have effects on my wife, and and so it it is not like this minor little thing. Um, but uh, so I, I I had to call up to the restaurant, and this is in two thousand five, early two thousand five. Um, and uh, I called up to the restaurant, make all these accommodations, and then they still couldn't meet those accommodations because no one knew what the hell we were talking about. Um, fast forward 10 years, I can go out to almost any fast food restaurant, any major restaurant in, in, in the state of yeah. Oregon, and, and I can say, do you have a gluten-free menu? Absolutely, we do. Here it yeah, is. Here's 12 items. Sorry, our fries are actually, our, 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 our fryer is a shared fryer, so we do do some, some, some wheat-battered stuff in with, along with our gluten-free yeah. stuff, so that's not entirely gluten-free, and there, we have this and that. All of a sudden, there's people making accommodations who understand what it is. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and people do have different intolerance ranges to it. You are correct there. Um, and uh, there are people to generate hives. Uh, my wife has such an intolerance to it because of the disease that she will get hives from wheat in her shampoo. Oh, wow. Um, and uh, so yeah, there, there is a, there's a lot that goes on. I, I, didn't, I didn't mean to say that gluten intolerance in general or- Is not a thing, it is a thing. It is a thing. Um, but, but here in Oregon, the problem is, is that it's one of those, Oh, I'm gluten intolerant because I have an upset stomach. You know the Karens with the "Can I see your manager haircut?" They yeah. tend to be the well. My kids can't have gluten. Yeah, it, 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 and that's all of a sudden why I'm able to go out to restaurants with my wife again it, is because it, of people like that. It is, it is. <laughs> but then there are other people like that. They're like, ah, gluten people. Yeah. Yep. Um, uh, have you tried gluten-free beers? That's a yes, question. we have. Yes, we have. Uh, there's actually a whole brewery in um, Washington. Ghost fish. Ghost fish. Ghost fish. Hundred percent gluten free. Everything. They have an amazing stout. And, and actually, yeah, their their stout is damn good. There are some of them are like this is yeah. this is injured. but then they're selling. This is the stout. This I've had like a stout. I've had two or three gluten free beers on my normal on my normal YouTube. And shows. you wouldn't know, right? Uh, one of them I uh, was a was a, a monitor review, and I I made a point to saying a gluten free IPA. Yeah. In, in the in the intro to it. Um, and, uh, there's some, there's a mission, uh, yeah. one that makes, Omission. uh, uh gluten-free beers. They're okay. Omission's more of the, they're a 
bigger yeah. uh, brewery company. They're part of the Widmere, who actually just got bought. Mm -hmm. But um, but like go, Ghost Fish is more of the craft, so you'll see us. Even I will drink that because it's like that's a that's an interesting beer. I had completely forgotten about them a couple of months ago. I went and picked up a beer simply because it looked good. I got home and went, oh, that's gluten free. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so um, they, what's even cool, even the home brewers uh, like stuff, you can go to a home brewer store and, yeah. and they'll teach you, this is how you make a gluten free beer. Right. And that's really cool. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Regan says uh, she can't even have the majority of beers. Uh, for those who don't know what gluten intolerance is, gluten is the presence of any wheat, barley, or rye products. Yeah. So you're fine with Bud Light Orange. I love those words. <laughs> I love all of those words. I love everything about every single one of those words. And my wife can't have any of yeah. it. <laughs> it's great for him because he's like, yay, offer me. But oh, I can't share this with you. I, I can't cut it up in the kitchen. Yeah. I, I You know, I can open a beer at the same table. But, um, but he can't, you, you probably can't like... I just made this fresh baked loaf of bread. Ah, oh, dang right. it. Um, so I do still have a couple of items that are around the house. Um, are, are hard ciders gluten-free? The majority of ciders are gluten-free, but make sure you check that they're not malted because sometimes the malted yes. process involves uh, barley. Always, a lot of craft cideries are. Yes. The big cideries really check them hard yes. uh, because they'll put in sweeteners right. or other aspects like you're saying. Malt. Preservatives. Preservatives. Yeah, the, the, the malts yep. can be cut from barley exactly. which is all of a sudden a problem. Um, so uh, Red's Apple Ale is not but a majority of the other hard ciders are. I think Crispin. Crispin, Crispin is. Crispin I think is. Um, um, there's uh, I tr what what's is that one in Bend? Tree, uh, I don't remember what uh, no. Okay. The, the Bright Cider the uh, is it Mad Tree? Uh, angry, 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 angry Orchard. Orchard. Angry, angry Orchard, Orchard is. Angry Orchard is. I think they have a couple that aren't. Yeah. But um, I, I, what's the other one? So. Uh, two Towns. Two Towns. That's what it is. Yeah. Two Towns it is. Yeah, these uh, ones. And we have a couple uh, local that are 100% yeah. gluten free. Yep. Um, uh, Anthem. Anthem's are gluten free. Yes. But uh, Mead. Mead too is a lot of times gluten free. Mm -hmm. uh, again, check it. Always, no matter what, though, check yeah. uh, what's in it. E even if it if it doesn't say gluten free on it, it's probably not a safe bet. Right. Uh, a lot of the cideries are now starting to to list gluten free yeah. uh, certification because the, those people are are flocking to these. Going, I'd still like to be able to drink. Yes. And and so it is an advertising point for a lot of the cideries. Yeah. Um, as far as liquors go, um, vodka. That's an interesting one. Because Gin. most vodka is cut from grain, or m most most spirits in general are cut from grain, yeah. which is typically a wheat or a rye, um, or or barley. Like I said, I love all those words. Um, however, distillation typically removes most of the components that that would cause a reaction. So then um, it probably comes down to the, your tolerance level. It could be tolerance level depending on which liquors it is. It could also be that if you are going with a reputable distiller with a good process, with a good product, yeah. with that that is actually a pure liquor, a pure spirit. Um, most whiskeys are actually gluten free, even though they're cut from wheat or barley or rye. Most whiskeys, by definition, should actually be gluten free. Um, now there are some that are certified as gluten free because there's always some particulate that can come up in the yeah. evaporation process. Um, but in theory, all you're cutting out is the is the the, the liquor itself out of the distilled uh, plant. distilled plant. So right. yeah, you, usually you're taking out all the sugar, so really you're just taking out the distilled sugar. Right. Technically, is that that's what the whiskey is. Right, exactly. Uh, um, or whatever liquor. Yeah, um, and so my, my wife has had, has had whiskey with no allergic reactions. And by the way, uh, uh, yeah, I don't want to go full bore in saying whiskey is celiac friendly. Most whiskeys are celiac friendly. Most vodkas are celiac friendly. Most gins are celiac friendly, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, because they're all distilled spirits, um, and it all depends on how good the distillation plant is, how good their equipment is, how good their quality control and product control yeah. is. 
Um, and usually if you do go to a small distillery, most of the small distilleries probably have the distiller brewer there. Mm -hmm. You can talk to them, mm -hmm. ask them what's going on. Hey, is this gluten free, right. whatever, gluten intolerant? He'll be able to provide you. So if you're looking for more of those one-off craft distilleries, I don't yeah. want to go on a tour of a distillery, just talk to people. Yeah. They're actually usually very knowledgeable, especially because of cases like Oregon and the hipster movement, yep. essentially, yep. because people are now aware of that. Right. And, and like I said, it's because of those people who went, you know, my kids can't have gluten. It's because I'm able to take my wife out to go places. Yeah. We're able to buy liquors and, and spirits and, and ciders that are gluten friendly. Um, and so I, I don't disparage those people, although I, I wish they were a little less vocal sometimes. <laughs> yeah. You don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so do you, we had two more, but nothing super special. Nothing, nothing super special. We can either take the last 10, 15 minutes and just keep chatting about stuff, or, or we can maybe hit one of these if you want to. It's, uh, this one is kind of exciting. This was interesting. And yeah. This kind of, I, I thought hit more toward you. Earlier on, you were talking about editing your videos on your, <laughs> what, 43-inch <laughs> monitor? And, and uh, well, I guess Dell is coming out with essentially double that. It's actually four times. It's double width and double height. So it's Because a, it's an 86-inch monitor. 86-inch <laughs> touchscreen <laughs> monitor for your workplace. 4K resolution. I want one. Uh, I want one so bad. Jeff <laughs> wants to review one so bad. If you work at Dell, if you know anyone who works at Dell, uh, and by that extension, LG, because LG uses a lot of the same panels that Dell uses. <laughs> um, like Seriously, call me. I want he to just, review this He thing. just wants to review it. We were sitting there talking. It was like, could you even touch the top any corner? No. Nope. And he's he's got a wingspan of like six four. It's nope. Big, no, it's it's like six nine. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. Still couldn't. I, touch I got big old arms. The, still couldn't touch the corners of trying to work. I'm six five. My arms almost reach my knees. Yeah. So, um, who would use this? Yeah. This this is more of a projector replacer type thing. It totally is. It totally um, is. Um, I had a projector in my last house. I had a 100 inch pull down screen. That, that was a, an, an electric, the motorized yeah. up and down screen. This is 86 inches. I would ditch the projector for that. Oh yeah, and the fact that it's touch screen too. And I mean, 4K. And 4K. Yeah. Um, even just like, oh man, this would be so much fun to play. I mm -hmm. Price point was not stated in this article. No. Uh, I'm sure it is going to be skyrocketed. Um, it's high. It's gonna be high, <laughs> but launched time is considered around April. Yep. Which so. means they're probably going to have samples at CES. They might. So maybe we'll see um, you and Steve play with it. So we will be spending all day Thursday on the show floor, walking around trying to find the weird, obscure things, kind of like I did last year for one of the days, um, of things that it's like, that's really interesting. Yeah. I want to know more about that. Um, we're going to be doing that on Thursday. Um, uh, Monday we have some meetings, Tuesday and Wednesday are our two really busy days, and then Thursday is kind of like a go do all the things that we didn't get a chance to do or didn't meet with other people and walk the show floor, and Friday is a, hey, before you hop on that plane, can I can I just uh, talk to Craft Computing real quick? <laughs> yeah. What'd you think of this? Here's my business card. <laughs> Buy my bits. <laughs> <laughs> You kidding? He's gonna be dead by Thursday. <laughs> He'll be dead by Tuesday. Yeah. He'll be like Bud Light Platinum. Oh my God, I'm wasted. This place is amazing. Oh my God, where did they come up with this? You know what? You should. Oh, we should get him to just drink the Bud Light Stout that we had, or the Bud Stout. Yeah. The the Jim Bean Stout. I'll I will send him a six pack of that and be like here. Here's at least an ABV I approve of. <laughs> if you're going to drink crap, at least seven and a half. Uh, yeah, exactly. Here you go. Yeah. You know, uh, one of these will be three of yours. Yeah. Uh, Big Big Spoon, four ninety nine. Can you break dance for us? No. 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 Couldn't do it. Dance, puppets. I mean, <laughs> I, mean I can dance and I'll break. Yeah. Doing it. It would be a break dance. Yeah, but... so technically... 
But no. No. Uh, hey, Sonic Wang said he subscribed. So there you go. So, uh, to, to my channel? I don't know. He just said I subscribed. Oh. To my channel. Uh, so how does 4K86 look when you're within touch distance of it? Seems that uh, begs to be asking for 8K in that usage. Uh, it's not for up close. It's for like meeting room presentations. Yeah. It's for I'm standing at the screen and I'm drawing circles on the screen or like a D&D &D game. Dude, like a... Game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So it, 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 it's something it, like that. It, the presenter who's ever touching the screen is not looking at the screen. <laughs> right. Yeah, it, it's it's not for you. But honestly, it still wouldn't be too bad. I have a 70 inch in my living room right now and you, you've got a couple 70s as well. Yeah. Um, it's not that bad. No, no, it's really not. Jason would get wasted on mics. Oh, yeah. He might find an orange yeah. mics. Send Bite My Bits some high gravity. There you go. I mean, if Bite My Bits, if I would even do a collab video with Bite My Bits. That would be if, funny. If he would just... I'd love to see you two on camera together. I really would. I mean, I mean, I would do something with him. I would do it even for free. <laughs> just for heck. Steve's calling you out. Yeah, Steve... If I don't have any rhythm, let's talk about my older brother not having any rhythm. Right. All right? So. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can you draw a massive wang on it? <laughs> so there's a cold front coming in from the east. <laughs> Two little pockets of cold air behind that. <laughs> yeah. Like, All right, guys. Look out for rainfall over here in the Midwest. Well, the horde's over here. And there's another backup port over here. We're going to sweep them both this way. And as we go, let's just spread our forces. Spread them out. <laughs> Dick, <laughs> what do you see? Oh, my God, it's a giant. <laughs> well, wasn't there like a, air, uh, uh, a fighter pilot? Yeah, no. <laughs> you know what's funny about that? You know who the fighter pilot was? No. Uh, that was a, a guy named Dick. Uh, his no, his uh, his name is Dick. Uh, he does a lot of voiceover work. I'm forgetting his last name. Oh, right I thought now. that like was his call sign. No, no, his his actual name oh. was Dick, <laughs> and he was the fighter pilot in uh, in uh, uh, Awesome Powers. Oh, okay, that's funny. Um, yeah, who who was that? Um. Oh gosh, he also plays uh gosh, who is the voice actor for him? He also plays Dick on American, oh, Dad, American and, Dad and and it's the same name. Um Oh, that's an actual fighter pilot? No, he's not a fighter pilot. He played the fighter oh. pilot in Austin Powers. Oh, okay. Uh uh or David Keckner, excuse me. He plays uh, D David Keckner is the is the voice of of Dick. Okay. So that, but later that, on, he went on to voice Dick in American. In American. That was the connection. Okay, I remember now. Yeah. That's why I thought it was funny. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Call sign Biggus. <laughs> Major shrinkage. Yeah. Dick. Call sign Peter. <laughs> Uh, I think it was Jeremy Clarkson playing a, a game of car rugby. Could have been that as well. Uh, yeah, he did. In, in the great provenance of uh, Peniston. <laughs> Jeremy Clarkson did that in the American, when they like came to America one yeah. time. Uh, he was in like the aqueducts in LA or something like that and yeah. uh, did some cookies. Yeah. And yeah, I love Top Gun. Actually, I just watched the, uh, what, the Grand Tour, the boat one. That was pretty funny. The, the semen special. Yeah. That was pretty good. The act, it, it really wasn't that good. It was like, okay, this is just classic Top Gear. Right. The last 15 minutes, you're like, yeah. What's going on? Because they, they hit like this. Yeah, the, the whole time you're going, it's the Africa special. It's yeah, it's, it's, the, yeah it's the Africa special, but on boats. And then, and then it's the Bolivia special. Yes, for 15 exactly. Minutes. For 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I guess like someone died in that while filming that too. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, bite my bit stances. Oh no! 
Yeah, you know how much he got paid for that, though? Yeah. I do like his Christmas tree. I will say, I, I like his Christmas They're tree. They're all empty. Yeah. That, that's where he got his uh, 300, 280 terabytes. Yeah, uh, so I actually have a wreath that I keep forgetting to bring home. It's hanging on my desk at work. Um, I made a Christmas tree wreath out of uh, reclaimed RAM. Oh, nice. Uh, so it, uh, not my wreath, but there was one that made the front page of Reddit a number of years ago, like 2014 or 15. Uh, that year I went, well, like, crap, I got a crap ton of RAM. It was like DDR1? DDR2. Oh, okay. Um, and uh, well, I, I can make some, yeah. I can make a RAM wreath. And so I, I got some craft glue and I built this wreath and it, it supports itself. There's no wire or anything else. It's just craft glue and RAM. And it looks really sweet. And then I actually put a plaque on the front of it and I tore apart a bunch of Apple keyboards. So it says <laughs> Merry Christmas all in white oh, letters nice. on the keyboard. I also took some sodium memory, some laptop memory, and made little holly balls. Oh, yeah. It. See, see, you need to have that. Yeah. I, I was wanting see, to bring it here. Next year, next year, Christmas, we'll have to replace the lamp with we'll a replace Christmas tree. Yeah, exactly. And then, yeah, you'll have a wreath, and then the, the Christmas tree will have, like, old parts hanging on it. Yeah. Old, old CPUs old that CPUs. You know, turn into ornaments. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> that would be perfect. And then you can have, like, your LEDs just constantly, yeah. like, going back and forth on it. Yep. All right. 10.07. 10.07. Uh, anything else for us? Anything else for the good of the order? By the way, AMD stock price is at an all-time high, so I hope you bought it two years ago. Yeah, you know, I really wanted to. I, I debated spending a couple thousand mm -hmm. on that. And I, I, I considered it myself. Yeah, because we were all... But like, I was also breaking into this industry, and that would be a conflict of interest, so I didn't do it. Yeah, well, you should have just given me the money. Right. Had I, had I not wanted to start a YouTube channel and, and had any amount of traction because I was looking at it right around the launch of Ryzen, which is when I was um, actually in March of that same year. So they announced Ryzen in March. In March, I also registered craftcomputing.net and formed the YouTube channel officially. Yeah. Um, I didn't upload until July that year, but I had everything already set going, this is gonna be my channel name and here's how it's gonna work and here's what I wanna do. And so it was all just kind of brain work from there on out. Um, but uh, during that same time, I was going, I should buy some AMD stock. And, and by around September or so, I was going, I'm going to buy some AMD stock. And then all of a sudden a video hit. Uh, I, I had four of my first like 10 videos go well over 10,000 views. And set, in fact, a couple of them hit 50,000. And I'm like, this is easy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, like I, I had immediate success and it's not very common on YouTube. Um, but uh, by October, I had a uh, thousand subscribers. By December, I had uh, 3,000. And by March the next year, I had 10,000. Yeah. And it's like, okay, all of a sudden I'm in the industry. I've been to a CES. It's a conflict of interest to buy by stock. In, in AMD, a company that I'm supposed to be covering as a journalist. And and I, I never wanted that to be a question, even early on in my tenure uh, as, as doing this. So I, I... No, I remember looking at it. Decided not to do it, but it, I, I was in that boat. It was in like the $30 or like $38 range. It's like, that's not bad. I should, I should buy this. Then I looked at Intel, like Intel, like 120 like, oh yeah, I need to buy this now. Right, <laughs> right. Because they're in, in five years, they will crush Intel. <laughs> Yep. And if I hold on to this for 10 years, I'm going to make money. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Even if, even if they drop within the next five years, you know, that's how the industry goes. They'll peak, they'll drop, they'll peak again. Uh, how was your experience with performance on the 3A? Does it feel a bit sluggish compared to the Essential? Actually, if anything, it's a little bit faster than the Essential phone. Uh, the Essential phone... My biggest gripe with it was actually the cameras. Uh, they weren't fast enough and they weren't clear enough. Um, they didn't autofocus all that well. Half the time they wouldn't autofocus at all. Um, the selfie cam was abysmally poor. And given that I do a lot of Twitter posts with my cell phone, I needed something with a better quality front camera. Yeah. Uh, and rear camera because I was missing, uh, I'm, I'm someone who takes constant pictures of my kids and my dogs and, and things like that. And I was constantly getting nothing but blurry pictures of my kids as they were running around. And all of a sudden I bought the Pixel 3a and it's like, oh, I got a, I got one out of three good pictures. Yeah. That was worth the money. That right there. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Pixel 3a so far, I have been very, very happy with it. If anything, it's been slightly more stable than my, uh, my essential phone. If Because I had to restart my essential phone about once every four or five days. I would just do a restart on it and 
clear out the cache or whatever it yeah. was. This one can go about two to three weeks um, before it's like, ooh, it's it's getting a little bogged down. I'm just going to give it a quick reboot. Yeah. Um, but beyond that, this has been a phenomenally solid phone for like three forty nine. I think is what I paid for it. I think it's actually down to two ninety nine now. So good deal on a phone. Craft Computing sponsored by Cirix. Uh, I could totally go with a Cirix sponsorship. Uh, in fact, I have a couple Cirix CPUs in my collection. Yeah, the camera on the Pixel 3 phones is shockingly good. And, and that's kind of why I bought it was I didn't want to spend a lot of money on a phone. I hate buying flagship phones anymore. I'm certainly not going to finance one. Um, I think it's absolutely ridiculous at this point. You gave a funny look there. I mean, I didn't finance it. <laughs> You're making monthly payments, right? No, I just bought it off, right? Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> I, got, I, I got a great <laughs> deal on on the two. I bought two yeah. S10 Pluses. Okay. And I got two of them for seven hundred bucks. So that's a hell of a deal. Yeah. So my wife had to get a whole new phone number, yeah. but she didn't care. But yeah. So yeah. Yeah. See, I bought two of these phones because I bought my wife a new phone. She finally goes, "Yeah, my my iPhone success is getting a little bit long in the tooth. I, I want to upgrade. I don't necessarily want to go to the Apple. I don't know. I don't like the new Apple phones. I don't like the lack of a home button. If I'm going to lose the home button anyway." Yeah. Why not just do the same route that you went? You seem to be happy with it. So she kind of made that decision. And I went, well, I'm not happy with the essential phone. Let's just go out and buy a couple Pixel phones. And so we went out and bought a couple Pixel 3As for 700 bucks. Couldn't be happier. Yeah. So that's my, uh, my Blitz review on those. Uh, the night mode is 100. Yes. Night mode is fantastic on this. I, I love the night mode. I love the dark mode. I love being able to pull down my notifications and it's dark and I can actually oh, yeah, read right. my notifications yeah, I in the dark. I, I, the, the moment I always set all my phones to, yep. you know, dark mode, it's like, I read everything better. Everything's on dark mode. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why that's not stock. Yeah. Or, or, or the default, sorry, not stock, but default. Yeah. So anyway, I have some work to do on my lapel microphones. I'm going to get going cause it's 10 15 at yeah. night and, uh, I think we're going to call that an episode. Thank you guys so much for watching episode 113 of Talking Heads here on Craft Computing featuring Hops and Brews. Uh, if you like this video, make sure to like this one down in the page below. That thing down there, the, 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 the thumbs up button. Hit that. Yeah, it's right below the video. Right. Uh, subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Subscribe to Hops and Brews as well. Also follow both of us on Twitter at Craft Computing and at Hops and Brews. Uh, you won't be sorry. Fifty um, percent, <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Uh, if you are really interested in getting to know us, consider joining the Patreon. Only a minimum donation of one dollar per video, and you can cap that at one dollar per month. So you pay for the first video of every month, and you're done. Um, you'll probably want to donate more, though. You'll probably want to donate more because, well, you like seeing the content. I I bring you good content, uh, but. Uh, uh, you don't get early access to videos, but you do get access to chat with us basically 24 hours a day. You at either one of us within an 18 hour window, we're going to answer. Gonna and if answer. I don't answer within that window, I'll answer as soon as I wake up. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I mean, we're, we're, we're talking at like midnight. We're still yeah. talking and then I, we wake up at six and we're talking and I'm talking again. Right. Yeah. It's the first thing I, it's the first thing I do when I wake up and it's the last thing I do before I go to bed. Yeah, it's, I, it's, it's I like, like take up, I'm like on the toilet. I'm like, all right, discord. <laughs> Another Star Trek meme. Who <laughs> <laughs> Beverly. Uh, Seven of nine. John. Hey, come on. That was funny. It was funny. <laughs> that was that was funny. That's a good one. Anyway, join the Patreon. It really does help me keep the lights on around here. It helps keep content coming to you and helps me afford the the weird knockoff videos that uh, that you guys like to see. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I don't know yet what day we will be filming Talking Heads at in Vegas or how long it will be, but we will be doing an episode of Talking Heads with a couple of special guests. So do stay tuned for that. I'm gonna assume it's gonna be on Thursday, maybe sometime middle of the day, maybe maybe closer to like four o'clock. I, I, I got called out on my, my bits Discord. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> you saw bitch, you're whoring with the enemy. <laughs> Hashtag Team Bud Light. I'm going to start calling you Team Bud Light now. No, 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 no. Team Orange. No, no.
You're even wearing the Bud Light blue shirt. Uh, that's just it's more, of a, it was more of a blue screen. I was like, this way Jeff can put whatever he wants on me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, and uh, follow me on Twitter. Find out when we're streaming next week. And we hope to see you then. Other than that, stay tuned to the channel for CES coverage live from Las Vegas all week long. Cheers, all. See you guys.